are just delusional. My daughter could draw better than this. And she's five. Our canvas passed out. What's your excuse? For your first elimination tattoo, you must draw your tattoo using only live reference. <laughs> what the Let's bring him in. Oh, Whoa. my God. Oh, 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 yeah. Holy I'm afraid of snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Oh, oh, oh. Get the out of here. Are you serious? A hawk? Really? You got to keep that thing on a leash. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, don't be moving. Oh. Whoa. whoa. Gators, seen plenty of them. Don't want to get near them and draw them. You will have six hours to tattoo in any style you choose, and your canvases are completely open. But you must use one of these animals and no other reference. Only using live reference? It's so unpredictable. You can't draw what you see if it's moving constantly. Drawing is everything in this competition. Today, I'm hoping that somebody can actually draw from life and show me details. Is you're cool, I'm cool. Yeah, I can do that. The hardest part about tattooing when you are a team and you're tagging in and out every hour is who's micromanaging? No, no, just bring it up right there. Who's backseat driving? Who's in control? Go a little bit in, right there. They're going to have to be on the same page to come up with a drawing that they can both execute. Right, Michael, I believe it's in your hands, bro. Let the fun begin. I mean, you're running out of reference. I don't want you to go past what we've drawn. I'm really aiming to show the judges that we have a better concept over everybody else's. I mean, I don't want to, like, waste time just, like, not doing anything. I mean, well, it's better to not do anything than to do what doesn't need to be done. For the most part, I do black and gray, but at the end of the day, I want to do whatever technique works best to tell my client's story. Come on, let me bring you this new script real quick. Dave is changing the sketch. Why are you doing that? We had a plan. Let's stick to it. Well, it was never finished, so. People doubt me because I'm a young black female. I don't have that many years of experience, but I'm here to prove everybody wrong. Just let people know, like, hey, we can do the too. Two more hours to go. Switch artists. Crunch time, buddy. Bro, I did not expect to see, like, live animals walking in. No, dude, that was the last <laughs> thing I expected. I've been tattooing 17 years. I am known for the realistic, black and gray, high contrast, photorealism style. Think you got it? I do. Mike's my boss. He owns the shop, so there's a lot on the line. I have been tattooing approximately five and a half years. My style is illustrative, bold, bright, colorful. What I'm weak in, he excels in. We're a perfect match. There is no reason we can't win this. Absolutely. You killing a brother? Thank Proud you. of you, huh? We're a big family. This is my brother for another mother. Yep. Probably a bit more black right in that area. Just to push it. Yeah, at the end of the day, I want to show my family that here in the United States, you can make your dreams come true. We're here to win it. This is a good tattoo. This is the best thing out there. Five, four, three. Two, one, that is it. Machine's down, time is up. No more ink. Very, very confidence, for sure. That's awesome. Tri-Cities and thicker than blood. Should be worried about going home today. John and Bobby Aries tattoo looks like a weird space worm. And Tri-Cities tattoo just looks like just a tube with a head. It's just bad in a different way. Definitely one of a kind. Today, you had to prove the strength of your shop by creating a tattoo using only live reference. Based on your work, one shop will be the first to go home. Let's see how you did. Thicker than blood. This, to me, doesn't look like the snake that came in. For me, it looked like a snake, and everybody else here knows it. Look at the top line of the head. Look how it goes across all the way to the back of the body. See that hard line you put in? So you just took that thing's head, and you just took its body, and you went <laughs> broke it there. So it's already got a snap spine. It's completely anatomically impossible. You're not showing us that you can draw from life. Tri-Cities tattoo. 
the big question is what's going on with this in and out of the skin thing? The snake is sitting on top of sand. Part of it is going in sand, and part of it's going out of the sand. To me, it doesn't look like it's going in and out of anything. It just looks like it stops and starts. We drew exactly a boa constriction. That's what the challenge was, to draw from the reference. You're drawing from life. You're putting in the details from life to show that you can draw what you see. This does not convince me of that. The Marked Society. What was your plan of attack here? To figure out how to incorporate both our styles. I normally do a more of a realistic style. And I actually, yeah, I drew all the frame and then the little medallion. This is the farthest from a realistic alligator ever. What you guys needed is the details in the body. You miss those textures and you miss the length of the snout. One of the two of you got to be able to see that something's off. We try not to step on each other's toes by doing that. For a team to win here, you're going to have to dance on each other's toes. Today, you had to prove the strength of your shop by creating a tattoo using only live reference. Based on your work, one shop will be the first to go home. Tri-Cities, as much as it has nothing that I want to see, still looks like what it's supposed to be. So would you guys say Tri-Cities is safe? I would. So now we're looking between Mark Society and Thicker Than Blood. We didn't make the challenge, but we show a lot of potential in that tattoo. As far as drawing, these guys' snake is questionable, your guys' gator's questionable. So now we got to get down to tattooing. Application versus application, there's a clear victor. Thicker Than Blood. My vote is also for Thicker Than Blood. Thicker Than Blood, the judges have decided you do not have what it takes to be master shop. You guys got a lot of heart being here, man. Keep going, learn, and grow from it. Please pack your machines and move out. OK, artists, you have six hours to tattoo. If your fundamentals aren't right, your shop will be packing. And your time starts now. You want to figure out how the hell we're going to do this area? The ear? She wants a full body tiger caught by the toe with the back foot stretched out, crawling down her leg. And that's what we're giving her. If the tail's black, I just don't know exactly how we want to achieve that. I think our friendship has a lot to do with how well we can perform. I want to break the lines where, like, the black is going to go, you know? He can read me, and I can read him. You know, when he's upset, I can tell. Mike is my best friend. Thanks, dude. We've been through a lot of <laughs> family. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mikey. You have four hours remaining, and switch artists. Just basically double up that top, if I'm like. And I'm going to go over a lot of these. Just don't change nothing. I'm not used to anybody telling me, don't do this or don't do that. Nice. Beautiful. It's kind of hard to step back and let someone else take the reins, but I'm doing it because I'm doing whatever it takes to win this thing. This is your final hour. One more hour remaining. Switch again. Of course, yours is looking perfect. It's going to get a lot cooler. Some tricks in store. I see DJ is using a mag. I'm shocked straight off the bat. DJ's using a magnum. Is he? Just pushing it like a liner, but it's still not the same as lining. A lining needle is a group of needles that are tightly put together like this. A mag are needles that are put in between each other and make this shape. So he's using a mag to essentially emulate like five single line needles? Yeah. That's kind of weak, dude. Being allowed to use a mag in this challenge would mean that you could do multiple tiny lines that are perfectly spaced with much less work than pulling individual lines. This is not cool. Pulling lines with a mag? Who the f These artists might be a little jealous they didn't think of this trick first. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Four, three, two, one. That is it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. Oh my god, I love it. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Looks better in the mirror. Holy crap. So dope, dude. It looks shaded. That was the whole point. Old time. Guess what? You cheated. You used a mat. You're going to the bottom. Today, you had to prove your fundamentals. Bubba. This challenge was designed to test your weaknesses. Old Town Inc., you're up first. Baba, how's it being back? I feel like I've been preparing to come back here since I left. I'm ready for it. 
This is a very clean, very legible, very strong illustration. Technically, the lines look clean. The varying line weights are used smartly, and from a distance, you do create shading with using only small lines. Little reactions over there. What's going on? They used a mag. I mean, I would have used a mag too if yeah, I could have. We all yeah. would have. You guys just didn't think about it. You guys are mad because you didn't think about it. No, we That's did. It. We followed the rules, though. We followed the did rules you? too. Dragging the mag. I mean, it is a way to make lines. I think it's smart. It is lines. Every single spot. Yeah, but the same effect that they did with the mag, I, I went through and I did it with a single needle. A lot of us did. This is a game. And if you're smarter than your opponent, oh well. I will tell you this I'm pretty sure that these guys aren't going home. Tri Cities tattoo. Design wise, it does have nice flow to it, but it just didn't follow through. There's a lot of line work difficulties in this tattoo. These arc lines that go down the tentacles, very inconsistent. And also, some of the coral looks very similar to the tentacles of the octopus. Today is about pulling one line. I just don't feel like your guys' quality is living up to the rest of the rooms. The Mark Society. This tiger is crazy. If you take the head out of the equation, this thing looks like a lizard with some broken body parts. Where is the tiger's right shoulder? How does that come off his spine right there? Anatomy has proven to be a big issue. You've got some clean lines, but you didn't really capture the look of this challenge. You just crosshatch haphazardly. There's one tooth missing. Oh, you crosshatch over it. Devil's in the details. That stuff all exposes you guys heavily. Today, you had the tattoo illustrative black work. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's hear from the jury of peers. Guys, why did you vote Old Town Inc. to the bottom? You better play by the rules or you're in the bottom. Wow. OK, let's get into Tri-Cities Tattoo. You did come a little bit stronger with the design, but it's pretty clear this is a bottom tattoo. The purpose of this challenge was to create a tattoo showing depth through line work. We created depth. We have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. But you have a lot of sloppy line work here. Lines are crossing over, lines are mismatching. But there are examples of some solid line work also. You ain't pulled a clean line since you've been here. I'm gonna eat the out of your tattoo, Yeah, bro. eat it up. The Mark Society. The bulk of your disability in this tattoo is the design. It's been a hell of a week, you know, dealing with personal problems and just trying to get in a groove. The biggest thing that would make it hard for me to see you guys be in Master Shop is the fact that this tiger is so far off, it's odd. But we created that. They have a flat image. At least with what our tattoo, you can yours? tell. Yeah. Let me, can yours I finish talking? Yeah. I feel like with ours, you can at least tell what it is. Our drawing was flawless. We didn't stumble on the anatomy. Just because I didn't call your octopus out for anatomy doesn't mean it's anatomically yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. It is time to determine who's going home. I mean, I know the tiger is jacked. I know the octopus looks more like an octopus. And for Mark Society, they do have some cleaner lines. Chris. Mark Society. My vote is also Mark Society. The judges have decided. The Mark Society. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. Your outline and your drawing are the framework for everything that goes in them. So if you can't get those things together in this competition, then I think rightfully you guys are in the right place. Please pack your machines and move out. You have six hours to tattoo a natural disaster. And your time starts now. OK. And here we go. That works for you? Yeah. I decide to just go for it. I'm giving my canvas everything he's asking for. Here's a drawing. Here's a skin break Thank reference. You. We got cars floating in the water. We got some rocks. We got some boardwalks. We got some palm trees. There's no tattoo with more detail in ours. Time to get busy. I believe Made Rich knows what the judges want more than me. Make sure to leave a little skin break off the car. Got it. And, and the, the flagpole. <laughs> I trust your judgment. Let's go. Three hours remaining. Switch artists. Tear it up, Bubba. So this is what we're going to do here. Put your machine down for a second. Dave doesn't need to take the lead all the time. I just took the lead on the flash challenge, and look how good we did. Dave, you're going to keep switching stuff up last minute. Yeah, we got to make the script perfect. Two hours to go. Switch artists. Did you see Carlos in there? Yeah. It's massive. It's what they do all day, though, every day. Black Anchor is a world-class shop, and it is known the world over for having really great realism artists. How are you guys doing? 
I'm gonna have to jam on it. <sighs> I'm confused at this point that I am even in an alliance in this competition. I think they gave us a harder one maybe to try and knock us down a little bit. I'm biting my lip off right now. Honestly, I feel like we could really shine. I just hope that time is on our side. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, machine's down, time is up. No more ink. Dunzo. That's awesome. Hell yeah. It's too big, dude. It looks smaller when you put stencil on, but then you forget about all the color around the outside. Today, every detail counts. Made rich, this challenge was designed to test your weaknesses. So let's see how you did. Think before you ink, you're up first. What you have here is a strong design that doesn't really translate in the tattoo as well as it did on paper. But you do have clean line work. You do have smooth shading. Your application and your tattooing, nice. The actual imagery, lost. You have the exact same tonal shading in the water that you do in the car. It's all camouflage. So you did all that nice tattooing and all that hard work not to shine. Tri-Cities Tattoo. First of all, you can definitely tell what's going on. Definitely see Tornado, definitely see the graveyard at the bottom. One detail that stands out is this little gate that's flying up in the air. This thing looks like the kind of gate, it's like two pieces and it opens, but somehow when it flew in the air, both pieces just stayed perfectly together and they're flying. Seems a little weird to me. The details you have in the bottom of the tombstones, I think you have some questionable line work. Technically, this tattoo is pretty challenged. Black Anchor. The perimeter shape is just an obtrusive big smear on the side of his body. You gotta leave some open skin. It's like everywhere you look in this tattoo is a cover up. The only contrast you have is from the areas of solid color to the areas of light color you did. As far as details go, there's no detail. This is one of the rougher tattoos I've seen here. Today, you tattooed scenes depicting natural disasters. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's hear from the jury of peers. Why did you vote Think Before You Ink to the bottom? One we could tell was a volcano when you look at it, and this, you can't really decipher what it is right off the bat. Today is a crazy day. You guys say the worst tattoo is not Black Anchor. As far as details, we were trying to compare the problems in each tattoo, and so we felt like... So you think like... the details in Think Before You Ink are not as detailed as that volcano? I mean, look at the Ferris wheel. It was a yes and no question, champ. I feel like ours is a little bit more recognizable. Yeah, I didn't have any detail in that tattoo. It's a little bit more dynamic than yours. Dynamic. It wasn't dynamic day. It was detailed day. Black Anchor. This is a large, unappealing spot on this guy's body. Detail could easily be added to that. Back at the shop, we do multiple settings, and I know that's not this the case isn't back this at time. the shop. We're judging on today, and today it's just this blocked out mass with no detail on detailed day. But if we did get another shot, pick ourselves out of this slump, you know, this is our third, third time. time. And you guys keep throwing that around, like, so what if we've been down here before? At the end of the day, we're looking at it now, like they said. Try cities Compared to the other people in the room did small details, you're outshined. I just don't think our tattoo, when you look at it, it's not questionable as much as these two tattoos. It's the one that's the clearest to me of Correct. the three. But are we not judging on the worst tattoo of the day period? Because that's what I thought I was here to do. We do need to make a final decision. I'm gonna keep it 100% honest. I think Black Anchor did the worst tattoo of the day. My vote's for Black Anchor. Judges have decided, Black Anchor, you do not have what it takes to be master shop. It's a bummer, man. If I was picking teams, I would have had you guys first pick. But on any day, worst tattoo goes. Doesn't matter what you've done. Please pack your machines and move out. OK, artists, you have six hours to tattoo two cherubs on a single canvas. And your time starts now. Awesome. Okay, let's go. This. Today, these tattooers are going to tattoo on their own, but they have to look like one artist did them. I think a little bit of texture in the front would be cool. Perfect. It is incredibly easy to mess up cherub tattoos. The technical application has to be spot on. Gray wash outline everything. I'm just going to bag it, gray line it. Hey, if you feel comfortable with it. So many things anatomically can go wrong here. How's the monkey? How's the monkey? Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
I need you to just make sure that everything over here is straight. I am stressed out to no end. The stencil keeps wiping off. I'm so far behind, I'm literally melting down. Take a Sharpie and do like a loose indication of the line. I don't have a clue how this is gonna work out if I've gotta draw on every line before I do it. Give it one more go, I suppose. I think I can face it with the shade in, but like, I had to stop. Let me see you uh, hit one of the other ones. Dave's style is totally different from mine. Like, just make sure you just keep the skin tight and it doesn't need like too much pressure. Our communication is really working. We're checking out each other's tattoo. He's giving me advice. This is the best that we've ever been working together as a team. What's up, man? Nothing. I told myself I was gonna make your life a little hell because you me, but I'll leave it alone. Tri-Cities, what is your motive in this game you're playing? You're Aggie. You're kinda close right <laughs> you're Aggie as <laughs> I talk a lot, but I got the skills to back it up. You showed your colors, Dave. I'm the vet. They could have had a friend in this house. People always thinking I'm starting. I don't be starting. I don't be saying He's annoying as Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> All righty. No, those are so sick, man. <laughs> Nate Rich talks so much, but he can't back it up with being able to tattoo. Your tattoo looks like a toy sleeping on cabbage. God, do I want Made Rich and Think Before You Ink to go home. Today, you had to prove your technical application was flawless. Tri-Cities Tattoo. Looking at both the tattoos, it looks like one person did it because both of you have incredibly hard times outlining. Bang the back of your inside leg and that huge, crazy line you tried to clean up, you have to do it in one pass. Dave, your outline is very blown out. The skull, in the hand, and then the hair. This collarbone area is just a really tough area. Think before you ink. Well, guys, there's an obvious divide here. Rich, your tattoo's a lot smoother. You have a lot cleaner outline and a lot smoother shading. Your tattoo quality definitely progressed from when you were here. Thank you. The tat yours shows a big variance from Rich's as far as application goes. You have a lot of shaky lines. The tips of the fingers are blacker than the line coming down. There is a way to pull a really clean line, and you're missing it on this. Allegory Arts. I do love the illustration. The way they work together as a design is great. Getting right into the rough side of it, both outlines, really rough. Euless, your side, that back leg, those ripples and wobbles and the nervousness of those lines make the leg pretty misshapen. Eva's outline looks a little heavier and bolder, but also has quite a few areas of blowouts around the top. Yeah, that skin can be really tricky. Today, you tattooed black and gray cherubs testing your technical application. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Time to hear from the jury of peers. Guys, why did you vote think before you ink to the bottom? Someone want to speak? I feel like d -tat Star's application was very chunky. Yeah, but both of y'all didn't do a great tattoo. d -tat, your tattoo, is one of the bottom tattoos of the day. The shading is not smooth like Rich's is. It's a pretty large gap. I think the flaws that we have in our tattoos are very minimal compared to the other two. Blowouts live on the bottom period, no matter who you are. There was a lot more blowouts in those times. No, there's not. You can see a blowout in the top of d -tat Star's halo. What the hell out of And here. it's filled with solid black around. Y'all got two bad tattoos. Honestly, guys, I don't find these two tattoos amazing. Y'all were less challenged in the design, but technically, you jacked them up. No one's brought up Tri-Cities tattoo. Tri-Cities has equal amount of blowouts. Bang's legs almost connect on a blowout. There's blue bruising. Do you guys not see that? I see it now. You've already had previous critiques and other tattoos about technical application. Today was the day to really hone in on it and not show us those mistakes. We got caught up trying to like match our tattoo aesthetically, and that ended up being why I had those blowout issues. Time to determine who's going home. The most appealing imagery is allegory art. The more consistent application between two artists also is allegory art. In my mind, allegory is safe from going home. You guys aren't going anywhere. Thank you, guys. The best single application out of all four of these tattoos is made rich. Rich is better than DTAPs, but then if you go to Tri-City, there's application problems on both sides of the fence. No-brainer for me.
Tri-Cities Tattoo. My vote's for Tri-Cities Tattoo. The judges have decided. Tri-Cities Tattoo. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. Exposing yourself in this environment is tough. You guys are just at a phase where you need to grow more, and then, who knows, maybe y'all will be back. Please pack your machines and move out. You have six hours to tattoo. If you fail, for you, this battle is over. And your time starts now. Let's get this thing started. We're testing composition by giving these artists color realistic battle scenes. Now this is kind of what we're thinking. It's beautiful. Cool, yay, awesome. There's many different elements that are occurring at once. There's movement, you have flesh, you have cloth, there's a foreground, and you have a background. And that all takes composition to execute. Hit the contour that you showed me. Don't even come in on the nose, don't come in on the mouth. Just do the outside of the face. Got it. I am gonna take my man D tat up off the bench. I'm making sure that we work on this tattoo as a complete 50-50 team. Just knock out the nine on this one, and then just move to the next one. Cool. I don't wanna hear from nobody. I can do this, and that's that. We've been in this bottom too many times. Made wish is not meant for the bottom. This has to be our week. This is your final hour. One hour left. I thought you said you'd wanted to soften up the top. Um, it's pretty soft as it is. I want the top to look a little more even with the bottom. The only battle in this situation is our canvas battling with us. I'm just not seeing your background, and I'm, I'm not picturing it on the tattoo, and I'm worried that it's going to not look good. Yeah, but as artists, we like to give you something that we see as well as a collaboration together. But oh. it's my tattoo, so give me, give me a minute. OK. Now I'm in freaking panic mode. Just go. We're trying to give her best tattoo, and she's second guessing everything we're doing. This is crazy. So when you do the cuffs, these cuffs are leather, not the skin, but it's the same brown tone right now. Okay. Our goal to make this tattoo stand out is to plan a good foreground, a battle scene in the middle, and then a nice background to accent it. My only nervous thought is, did we go too big? Guys, we're gonna stop for a minute. Get my head in. Breathe nice and slow. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I'll try some of this. The sugar in your system is gonna help. Here. You passed out. Pass out. Hey, you with us? Tim. Tim. This color's coming back with the ring. Tim, you awake? Oh. There you go, buddy. It's all right, man. It's all right. Need some sugar or something? Get the chair up. Get the feet up. Are you kidding me? I do not want to go home in an unfinished tattoo. It's a little breast, man. You'll be all right. Welcome back. So I want you to do what you want to do with the dress. OK. And um, I'm not going to do the background. OK. I feel like a lot of this comes down to this girl not being able to sit for a six-hour tattoo. Jess, do you want me to get in or you go? I just, I think you tattoo a little more gently. No worries. Yeah, that's fine. This girl's insane. Absolutely. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. OK. Oh, my god. I would have loved to be able to do a lot more to it. We killed this challenge, man. Most of these other people, they didn't even finish. I mean, hopefully we get to stick around. <laughs> I highly it. That was like so relieving. I feel like this competition just started. I really think Think Before You Ink are just delusional. My daughter could draw better than this. And she's five. Our canvas passed out. What's your excuse? Today, you had to create battle scenes with clear composition, pins and needles. Was there a conflict when you got going with this canvas? Oh my she God. didn't want to trust us on any aspect. Aside from it not looking like a battle scene, and aside from the problems with the canvas and blah, 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 you drew those hands. Those hands are jacked. And you put that on somebody. I would have quit, too. You win your client over in the beginning, and you make them shut up by impressing them with a beautiful drawing. Your art speaks louder than anything. Artwork, first and foremost. That's how you get the title. Classic Trilogy Tattoo. 
What's missing from this? There's a rock face that rides the ridge line, and the clouds in the sky were gonna be like a washed out blue. A lot of time spent in that green. It looks like a battle scene that has the same color green in the hatchet blades that it does in the background, with a little darker shade than that in the loincloth, and a muddier shade than that in the pants. Yeah, that came into my mind shortly after putting the grass in. You guys went nuts in this thing. Drastically underfinished tattoo, and the 20 minutes that he has passed out is not the reason. Think before you ink. As far as composition goes, you got one guy going one way, one guy going the other, and a bunch of scribbly stuff in the background. The shape of the sword looked like a feather fight. Those are the shapes that the gladiators had, though. I got you, but the way yours look, look like they're bending, like, I'll hit you back. It looks playful. The guy on the left is wearing a Spartan helmet. What helmet is the guy on the right wearing? Samurai! We wanted them to be different. Well, they're different, different continents. As far as doing anything real, the hand's not real, the arm's not real, so you're not competing. Today, you had to prove that you've mastered composition. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's hear from the jury of peers. Why did you vote Think Before You Ink to the bottom? I feel like the majority just picked the tattoo that we found the least appealing. Yet again, yet again. Do you feel that that's a personal thing? Of course. It's just fundamentally, man. The color doesn't mean a line. Could you call yourself Ink Master doing that? I'm good with the piece. It's just serious <laughs> me. It is serious <laughs> and I'm seriously standing by my piece. There's technical problems throughout. The line work has problems. The black shading has problems all over the place. But I do know there's two guys that are about to have a feather fight. I know what's happening. But what's realistic about that? Nothing's realistic. Of the three, it's the least realistic. Oh, no. What's realistic about the girls? Well, first of all, there is anatomy that is proportioned. Where? She has no right shoulder. She's a shoulderless woman. We have decent anatomy on ours. I just can't see it. That green, when you go into it with some highlights or some tones, like you but were guys, saying. guys, that is not the technique that's going to finish a one sitting tattoo in six hours. Oh, we've that we've learned canvas. that. We're not disagreeing whatsoever. No. We have three challenge tattoos here. The problem I have is if somebody cruises in the middle of your work, that's the ultimate slap in the face. It's really difficult, man, because pins and needles didn't really do much of a battle, nor is it finished. But overall, the tattoo looks cleaner. I'm going with Think Before You Ink. The judges have decided. Think Before You Ink. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. Please pack your machines and move out. You have six hours to tattoo, and your time starts now. Let's go. Let's do it. This week, the tattooers are being judged on artistry. Freehanding is something that I want to know that an ink master is going to be able to do. Drawing straight on the skin, going directly to your outline with your machine. No stencils. I'll be done when the time starts, I promise. You shush. Did you say that? He's killing me right now. The person who's drawing has to quarterback the tattoo throughout because they see the vision, and they have to translate that to the person that's inking it. Anytime you do something I don't like, I'm going to go for this challenge. We decided it's best if I just walk away and let Lalo do his thing. Sometimes we don't work very good when we're sitting over each other's shoulder. Do us proud, Lalo. Don't worry your pretty little head. I got it. Please don't screw this up for us. You ready to do this? Not there, but on the tip, yes. I have to work off Derek's freehand, but I'm only taking it as a loose interpretation. I'm going to do my own thing. It should probably be a little bit peeking out, because there's a shadow. You know what I mean? A little black there. Uh, not there. That's all plumb. What are you doing, Tom? I give you a straightforward, traditional piece to follow. But you're not following the game plan, and you're going right back to the style we're getting called out for. This one here is not black. No, no. no that'll be green. Yeah, you're right. You got so! Yeah. You want to take a look? He is going crazy. That color palette makes no sense whatsoever. Don't be nervous. It's a good day at House of Monkey. We were supposed to have a nice amount of black and a simple color palette. We didn't need all this blue. Lalo, you had one job. The colors, man. Final hour remaining, guys. One final hour. Bring a little bit of purple up in here in these corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth that blend out. Oh, yes, just stop. Tap it with water. Just whip out. Don't go circular. 
I don't have time to finesse. I'm the one doing the tattoo. I got to move on this now. I don't want to stick to the technique that I'm used to. I know it starts from the drone. If he had simplified it, I wouldn't even be in this situation. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. Yay! What do you think, Marvin? You into you it? it? Yeah. <laughs> Looks awesome. Like it? Stop. Yeah, man. How did it feel for you? Feel good? I did a big ass tattoo, perfect lines. What did you and you like? No, no, no. It's, I would have, there's huh? a couple things I would have did different. But, I mean, of course. You know, you're in the driver's seat. Today you had to prove your artistry. Black Spade tattoo. ES Drew and Rough You tattoo. The amount of phoenixes that we have seen that actually look like phoenixes are very few. So I like the drawing a lot. The drawing is very solid. I like the idea of the negative flames coming up. But if we zoom into the bottom, this right here is very rough. You can still see your scratchy wash outlines. The color blends between one color to the next. It's not smooth. This quality of work is not going to last. I can tell you that right now. House of Monkey. Picasso did the drawing and Lalo tattooed. I like the drawing a lot, but my only problem with the tattooing is the colors. The problem with this tattoo is this big, scratchy baby blue bubble on the top and this light green that's not finished in these cactus. It's not solid, it's not smooth, it's just a lot of sloppiness. Classic trilogy tattoo. Derek drew. Tom tattoo. The black dahlia flower really muddies up this whole piece. I don't think it's her fault for choosing a black dahlia. I think it's your fault for the way you colored it. It's a lot of solid saturation, but you have basically paint by numbers feel to it. You guys need to now break out and show off something because everybody today did a good tattoo and somebody's going home. Today, you had to freehand directly onto the skin with no stencils. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's hear from the jury of peers. Why did you vote Black Spade tattooed at the bottom? A lot of the fundamental technical issues were called out. And we felt that House of Monkey had a stronger overall design than Black Spade did. All we needed was a few more things to make this crispy and complete. I think that what they made might have been more of a mess than what you're seeing here. It's mm -hmm. a tough debate. I feel like House of Monkeys, it's a strong line drawing, but there's just a lot of peach, a lot of baby blue, none of which is really applied very well. Was Classic Trilogy in the vote? We didn't even talk about Classic Trilogy's tattoo, actually. These guys are doing the same static thing. We wanted to make a complete tattoo, but time-wise and all that, this definitely could have been more dynamic. The one word y'all need to add is versatility. Either or get off the pot, because what's coming over the next few weeks is going to knock you guys out of the box. So basically, we were between Black Spade and House of Monkey. When I see the phoenix from a distance, it's very clear what it is, and the color theory is nice. But when I look at the cow skull, the color theory is all over the place. Color theory can be fixed. Cool. But you have blue behind the tattoo, and it's not solid. That's easily fixed. How is that going to be fixed? To fix that blue background, you got to make it bigger. The challenge is artistry, and we're damn near closer to it than they are. They can see our tattoo from far away. If it's, you pour a whole thing of orange on someone, you're going to see it. That's why vest and road signs are that color, dude. <laughs> You're out of control. I mean, I'm not going. <laughs> it is true, dude. That's the sexiest part of a woman, she and you loved ruined it. it. She loved it. What was that? I'm oh, sorry. Bless you. You sneezed? All right, it is time to determine who is going home. You know, it's tricky. I admire the artistry in House of Monkey, but the color play within Black Spade is more pleasing. My vote is for House of Monkey as well. House of Monkey. The judges have decided. House of Monkey, you do not have what it takes to be master shop. I respect you coming back, trying to make it, but for you guys, as artistic and free as you are, this place is too restrictive. Please pack your machines and move out. Artists, you have six hours to show your ingenuity by tattooing a new school design. And your time begins now. 
Go time. Let's do it. All right. Doing a new school tattoo in a competition setting can be difficult because there's a million styles of new school. Like that? Just a little bit more. Boom. These artists are going to have to use ingenuity because we've seen it all. We're looking for these guys to come out and be original and take a swing at having fun with a piece of art. All right, you ready? Hey, April. I think that background's too much. This competition is so stressful, I'm cracking. I just want to get our straight. Don't be mad. Did you put the blue everywhere you wanted it to go, or no? No, not everywhere. Do you want to tell me where? When Dane's stressed out, he just needs to like get away so that I can actually concentrate on the tattoo and not concentrate on what's going on in his brain. If you want to do something to this, you have to show me, because I, don't, I can't get inside your head. I don't know what you're talking about. Got a worried face looking, though. You worried? No, I'm just watching. ES is moving too slow. Once again, I'm worried that we're going to run out of time. This corner right here. Yeah, I'm going to come in with the white. It's really not that hard. It's a cupcake and three blueberries. I wanted to put a, like more of a, a, a fleshy pink in there to do some of the caps of the ears. I, I don't have a clue of what the I'm doing. Just kind of do what you feel like you need to do. Not only does Hobo not do new school, Hobo doesn't do color. It's a lot of pressure on him to finish this tattoo. Shane, you know what you're doing. I'm losing confidence as I'm doing it and making the wrong palette choices. Man, we're crumbling bad. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. Woohoo! Finished. Dude, that looks phenomenal. You got through it, dude. I told you I get through it. Yeah, man. <laughs> that is some badass tattoo. I like your part of it. I'm not really a huge fan of the other two cats around it. Yeah. He's great. Today, you had to prove your ingenuity. Black Spade tattoo. Love the drawing. Love the colored palette choices. I love everything but the way you tattooed it. There is not a spot on this thing that is solid. The background, burgundy is not solid. Orange isn't solid. You put all the right stuff and set yourself up for another W. You didn't pull through. Artistic skin design. Well, guys, I don't think it's the best drawing. If we look at the hand that's playing guitar, no way, no how do any of those fingers make any sense. And the thumb coming from behind the guitar is crazy. Not a fan of this tattoo. This blue force field is rough. It's just a sea of washed out color. This tattoo looks 20 years old. You guys have done bright, strong tattoos that look like stickers. This one does not. Bone face ink. The drawing is super challenged. These are just two heads growing out of this little body. This little green guy on the left is totally jacked, man. One eye is round and outside of the bottom of the eyelid, and the other eye is squared off and tucked inside the eyelid. The finished product has a very amateur feel to it. It doesn't have the look of what we know Boneface's finished tattoos look like. Today, you had to show ingenuity by tattooing New School. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Time to check what the jury appears. Why did you put Boneface Ink in the bottom? This one was pretty apparent. You know, they, they thought it was the worst one. We kind of all did, too. It was unanimous? Almost. Tom? I voted for Black Spade. Their tattoo application was a little worse than this to me. I will say that Black Spade they had the perfect canvas, the perfect drawing, and it still led to a bad tattoo. I don't agree. There were some saturation issues, but the lines are good. If you can't see that the lines aren't good, then you might not need to be here either. I don't feel like our lines were bad. Our tattoo is dope. Technical application is the number one most important thing every single goddamn challenge, and this is Jack. Scratchy lines, scribbly everywhere, nothing is smooth. You did mention drawing is going to be a strong yes. thing here. I get it, man, but with solid application, you are fighting them for the win. You get that? Of course. The artistic skin design piece. The problem for me is the contrast in this thing. It's hard to read. I personally don't think that our tattoo would need that much help. If you want it to be anatomically correct, you need a laser. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that our tattoo is that bad that you need to laser it off. I understand that there's... You don't understand if you're yes, even saying anything. Yes, I do. I understand anything. that there's anatomical errors. I feel very insulted when you say that you want to laser our tattoo off. You could be as insulted as you want. I didn't do the tattoo you did. You're only fighting yourself. All right, time to determine who's going home. 
For me, Black Spade is readable. It's a new school design. My vote is for Boneface Inc. Boneface Inc. The judges have decided Boneface Inc. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. Please pack your machines and move out. Old Town has to go home for this one. It's very cluttered, and I don't even feel like it looks like American traditional. Their snake is terrible. I think it's so rad. All right, guys, you have six hours to show your consistency by tattooing a famous work of art. Your time starts now. All right, let's do this. Today, we want to show consistency, and that means these artists have to be very smart about which portion of the painting they attack and how they execute that portion. That's nice. Replicating the painting stroke for stroke is not realistic in six hours. So I'm expecting them to hit the colors and tones and the actual mood and look of that painting. All right, ready? Bring it. There's a reason that these things hang in the Louvre and in the Met, because they're phenomenal. And I grew up in Alabama. That's all I got. How you guys doing? Good. Eva, do you always do all the work? Um, <laughs> that's a very complicated answer. <laughs> One thing I'm always looking out for in this competition is allies. Unkindness, allegory, and artistic skin design are clearly an alliance, and that's a lot of numbers in a house like this. Let's go get our eyebrows in there. We got two minutes. Don't skip it, just move on. I'm looking at something that should be the tattoo of the day. But you know what? It's not going to be. Get the nails real quick, just real quick. Why? Because ES is moving super slow and it's not finished. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, machine's down, time is up, no more ink. Quit torturing this poor guy. All right, all right, all right, jeez. <laughs> You're done. What do you think? Wow, it's incredible. Thank you. Aww. I wish I could have thrown some more into the skin, but nothing's up at all in any way. Black Spade's tattoo looks horrible. Nobody cares about the yellow nonsense. All people care about is faces, and you messed those faces up so bad. Today, you had to show consistency by replicating a famous work of art, unkindness art. You tattooed The Witch's Sabbath by Goya. The color palette and the contrast, you guys don't particularly hit. The main thing is that this is a dark figure in the center. Your tattoo looks light and happy. If you look in the mouth, the mouth of the goat curls down, and yours actually just goes up. Very tough grab for yourselves. Allegory Arts. You tattooed St. Jerome Writing by Caravaggio. This is undeniably the blackest painting, but you miss the richness of the black. It's not technically put in that solid. Ultimately, the way it's left is kind of a drag because the skull is a vital part of this piece, and it looks unfinished. Y'all just did the skull on a book. I would have been stoked. Me too. It's too bad because it's such a strong painting. Black Spade tattoo. You tattooed The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. The figures being undone, big problem. You saved the faces and the hands until the last 45 minutes of a six hour tattoo. Y'all are insane. Her face is what we call busted. Her nose, where is it? Her lips, a red smear. You guys would be solid as a rock, but now you're not. Today, you had to prove your shop's consistency. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's go to the jury of peers. Why did you vote Allegory Arts to the bottom? We voted half Black Spade, half Allegory, pretty much. And they just inched out a little? Yeah. I voted for Black Spade. And when me and Aaron handed out the skulls, we gave them this one because it's the one that's the most easily translatable to a stencil. What's easy and what's hard is absolutely subjective. Black Spade, you could have had a decent tattoo if you finished the faces. For me, I think the best done tattoo is the one that looks the least like it, and that's unkindness. Best one done technically, you're saying? Yeah. It shows the most promise, but it looks more like a children's book. This is weird, trying to tattoo paintings in six hours. Right, but these guys got the Sistine Chapel and crushed it. All right, guys, it is time to determine who is going home. 
My vote is for Allegory Arts, primarily because of how unfinished it is. Chris. Unkindness art. Really? Yeah. We're not looking for what we like or what I want to hang on my wall. I'm looking for what looks the closest to what we asked people to do, which was a painting. I think it's safe to say that we're all three divided. I'm immovable. You're firm on Black Spade? If you're going on consistency. This is inconsistent. You spent the most time in the robe, right? That's where you showed the consistency? Yeah, I put uh, two hours in. It's not the pattern that's in the painting. This is a tough one for you guys, but you needed to do those figures first and then stick to the patterns and the colors and the way that that robe was. It's inconsistent to the pattern. I vote for Black Spade. The judges have decided, Black Spade tattoo. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. Please pack your machines and move out. You have six hours to tattoo a sexy pinup with appealing proportion. And your time starts now. All oh, right. Good. Do this. Today we're testing proportion with Ink Master's favorite pinups. Go ahead and take a mirror. I want to make yeah. sure you, you like where it's at. These artists need to make sure that her proportions are all voluptuous and sexy. There is one spot of this tattoo that is going to hurt so bad. <laughs> Today we're going to make these artists switch every 30 minutes because we want to see that you can do it all. If you came with a strong teammate, then you shouldn't have any worries. All right, Mika, let's rock and roll. This girl has dark skin. She wants tons of information put into this piece. Going big's a risk, but there's no other option here. If we go too small, it'd be very dark and heavy. I'm feeling really competitive. <laughs> really competitive, I, I like, like that. I don't want to move. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to lose today. Now I'm really nervous. I do not want to go home on the first challenge. Ooh, wee. <laughs> you OK? Yeah, I got to be. We're not getting done, right? <laughs> we're definitely just feeling the pressures of things with our canvas not working with us and not budging on the black and gray. The color's definitely taking a long time. That There's that skin tone there, you uh, know what I mean? There's more of a skin tone. I just wish we would stop getting dealt canvases. I'm so jealous you guys got the cowgirl. Pins and needles is tattooing a weird, unattractive lady wearing like a big oversized hat and a meat sack. It's strange. Oh, oh, I don't know how much I got left in me. Light at the end of the tunnel, bud. But tattoos, definitely not the most fun. I feel like I'm moving around. His skin is starting to become highly irritated. It makes the line work look shaky and wobbly. It's actually just swelling, and we're starting to worry about it. This guy could stand up, and it could be completely jacked. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. You're good. There you go. Go check it out. Yay! Thank you. Done. Oh. I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. I love it. The talent pool here is that ridiculous. There are some pieces that I looked at today that I was like, holy, wow. We have to keep up for sure. We're just warming up, you know what I mean? So I just hope we don't go home. Or more importantly, get bashed. Today, you had to tattoo a pinup. Tommy, this challenge was designed to test your weaknesses. Empire State Studio, you're up first. The tattoo itself, it is readable. But what I don't like about this is it's so stiff. Her back shoulder, the way it comes off behind her chin, it's not powerful. She's just holding on to her staff for dear life. Also, the way that her left ass cheek eventually curves around and connects to that front leg is pretty askewed. This is a proportion day. That's whacked out of proportion. Allegory arts. How was this for you? No pun intended, I'm bummed about it. When he was laying down, everything looked to me to be exactly where it needed to go, and now things look like they've shifted a bit. Your outline just reeks of wobbly, not well-stretched skin. There isn't a well-pulled line in the pack. I've tattooed a hell of a lot of asses, and there's only one way to get them done. You take that person and you bend them into a ball, like straight up, and you tilt them on his side and you make that ass tight as a drum. I don't care how saggy it is. I'll make that thing tighter than the table. I can't believe you guys tattooed it the way you tattooed it. You committed suicide. Pins and needles. 
it's not the most attractive pin up. The skirt looks more on the side of a dripping petal or lunch meat, anything other than fabric. We gotta talk about these legs. The back leg is just one width, one thickness, all the way up. Wait, which one's the back leg? That's the other debate. And you thought this is gonna fly, then you guys are crazy. Today, you had to tattoo the ultimate test of proportion, a pinup. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let me go to the jury of peers. All right, jury, why did you vote Empire State Studio to the bottom? We put Empire State Studio to the bottom for a lot of out of proportion parts. I also voted for Empire just because I feel like 50% of it is technically applied very badly. You can't ignore it, it's technically on sound. But design-wise, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm very proud of it. The design, though, is the part that throws me. From the shoulder up, the tattoo's fine. It's got a cool headdress, it's got cool feathers. When we come down is where you get the anatomical problems. I still argue this is the more appealing face. Like, put your thumb over that face and tell me what that tattoo is. Yeah, exactly, I have no idea. Ours didn't even deserve to be in the bottom based on proportions. You know, you guys debate on how proportionate or how well or how good these lines are, but look at the wobbly left cheek coming off the red. All you had to do was really pull clean lines. Do you think if I would have put this tattoo on a forearm that we'd be having this conversation? Honestly, you guys have had some rough outlines in this competition. I would say that we could be having this conversation 100% or you could have had a great day. Pins and needles. There's a slew of problems that I have. The feet on this, the legs on this. You guys are just drawing at straws here on shading this tattoo. Ours definitely does have some issues, but I feel like stuff that they had going on kind of stood out a little bit more. Yeah. Do you not see the same issue with some of Allegory's piece? Absolutely. But I mean, I gotta say, Allegory is the least challenged on the anatomy side. I cannot get past the face. I think there's equal technical challenges. My decision based on proportion is pins and needles. You know, my vote is always based on what just looks right. My vote is for pins and needles. The judges have decided, pins and needles. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. You guys built a brand and you really put some shining work out there. You guys definitely gave the big dogs a run for their money. Thank you. Please pack your machines and move out. Artists, you will have six hours to tattoo matching portraits. Your time starts now. All right. Yes. Good. When you go get a portrait, you don't want it to almost look like the person. Almost don't count. I think I should go a little bit smaller than this and a little bit bigger than that. It's very important that they stay precise to the photo as well as to each other. This is tough. You don't know if your partner's going to go off on a tangent and do something crazy. Are you super ready? Let's do this, April. Can you check what I'm doing to make sure that we're on the same page? Yeah. I am at Eva's mercy on this one. I'm definitely not the best portrait tattooer. So this is the gap where it's like where this is. Yeah, there's one lower and one higher. Mm -hmm. so and this they're is... kind of wrap around. Yep, you got it. Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah, that looks right to me. I know that she knows what she's doing, so I'm just going to try to do the same. It's a trust game at this point. Uh, your skin gets really red really easy. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. It. Yeah, that always yeah. happens. Yeah. Oh, my God. Her skin is lighting up like a damn Christmas tree. Let me see how's it going, bro. You know, just making sure, because it's, like, getting really irritated, so I have to be, like, super gentle. I have to do a super subtle, soft baby portrait, and I can't tell how dark the ink is? I am so screwed. Oh, no. You have four more hours remaining. What do you got for in this section? Is that a one, and then this is a, a skin tone, or is that? Most likely. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, OK. I'm a little worried about Tom, because it has been so long since he's done a portrait. I'm gonna say that's a skin tone. Yeah, that's a skin tone. All right, I'm sorry, that's a one. I just hope that he can rely on my strengths to help guide him through it, because you can't wander on a portrait. You have to do exactly what's in front of you. I can hear Aaron's canvas moaning from across the shop. Dane's tattoo turns red every time he touches the lady. I'm over here like a fish out of water. I don't know how Black Cobra figured out how to get us all at one time, but they definitely have. The Alliance is in trouble. Five, four, three, 
two, one. That is it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. Let's take a look and see what we got, yeah? Those look great. Yeah. Look at that. Are they twins? What's going on here? <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Looks like mom. Absolutely. Glad we could do that for you guys. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. This is awesome. For sure. Today, you had to tattoo the ultimate test of precision, matching portraits, allegory arts. You very clearly miss the mark on details in the photo. Y'all had the same approach for this nose, but that is not a human nose. It has a very feline look to it. Euless, the tattoo doesn't look like this little girl. The eyes, they're just different shapes. Well, Eva, I think you did get in there with a lot more precise detail on the hair. And overall, the technique and the shading is smoother, but you still distort the shape of her face. The shading you put above her left eye, you create these indentions and protrusions that just aren't there. Nailed it. Classic trilogy tattoo. Let's keep it 100. Your tattoos, they're different, big time. The hair looks different, the eyes look different, the noses, the mouths. Overall, Derek's looks more like the photo. Tom's eyes are doing different things. One's looking up, one's bugging out. You create this real stern lip on that right eye that gives it more of a creature type feature on the outside. Swing and a miss. Artistic skin design. Usually you look at a portrait and you're drawn to the eyes. I'm drawn to the clothing. On both of them, that sweater and that shirt, I see precision all day. But it just looks like a different artist did the top half. In both of them, the hair is completely different. Dane, you brought the left side down a little further. In April, you brought the right side up a little. They're not consistent or precise with the photo and certainly not with each other. Today, you had to prove that your precision is on point. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. All right, jury appears. Why did you vote Allegory Arts to the bottom? This was the cutest, most adorable subject. And that's not what the tattoos look like. Guys, there's a lot of things here that are off. The discrepancy in the eyes, the whys in the nose, just a huge head shaker. But they look closer to the same artist than Classic Trilogies does. But I put a face that was more accurate to the photo. Yeah, I think that you look at classic trilogies, neither one of them look like the photo, and neither one of them look like each other. And then you get into the technical aspect, and it's so haphazardly done. If they both looked exactly like yours, Derek, I would have no problem. I definitely dropped the ball. This application is just messy. Just look at the hair, and you're like, what is that? But it is a woman, artistic skin design. If you're not looking at the kid, they look like little old men. Both these tattoos have a very undone feel for me. Normally when I do portraits, I build up layers, and there is no building up layers. Well, I think you just panic. It started getting red, and you're like, damn, I don't want to put no more ink. But sometimes you just got to trust your skill. If you would have tattooed the rest of the portrait, at the level you tattooed the clothing, you wouldn't have been there, you know? Well, we do have to make a decision here. Classic trilogy. I'm just a canvas, and Allegory looks like a weird kid. My vote is for Allegory. I'd rather wear Derek's tattoo than any of Allegory's. But it's a competition, and it's not what I want. It's what the competition wants, so they did them exactly alike. They did them different. I guess I would have to say classic. The judges have decided classic trilogy tattoo. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. You guys tattoo a little different, and I think that's what got you here. Learn from this. Hell yeah. Please pack your machines and move out. Welcome to the Face Off. Basilica tattoo, golden skull tattoo, Old Town ink, and artistic skin design. Based on your work today, one shop will be eliminated. Bubba, Aaron, Christian, Dane. Because you did not tattoo one of the four horsemen, you must tattoo in this face-off. Fair enough. Your teammate can consult, but cannot draw or tattoo. It's on you alone to keep your shop in this competition. To prove your adaptability, you must draw your tattoo directly onto your canvas's skin freehand. cannot use any stencils, and you must draw from scratch with no reference. Oh. I'm totally regretting that I tattooed first, because right now, our fate lies in Aaron, and I'm a freehand specialist. 
You've each been randomly assigned a canvas. Your canvases are completely open, and the subject and style of your design is completely up to you. Yes! Do something that you know is going to rival the people in the room, and then deliver your best technical application. Looking at how you tattoo these things directly from a pen is all going to show in this challenge. Today could be a major curve. Let's bring in your canvases. You have six hours to tattoo, and your time starts now. Don't let this guy send you home. I'm standing here pissing my pants. I can't tattoo, but I'm all over Aaron like white on rice. I'm going to make sure that I double check everything he does. You forgot that one. No, I'm going to go back with your liner and do that. For the sophomoric design that Aaron put together, anatomically, the skull is so wrong. With that anatomy, that is the ugliest person in the planet. Clean, better start sweating. That has a good flow to it. It does. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad we made the choices we did. I know how this competition goes, and I wanted to make sure somebody's in reserve who's done these head-to-heads. So close. Final hour of tattooing. Are you putting white in the whiskers, or? Uh, I won't leave the skin tone. OK. Having so many ideas thrown at Dane right now is just becoming overwhelming. Keep your head down and just blast through this, all right? I'm trying my best. He's kind of freaking out a little bit. I'm doing it. Going AWOL. What are you doing? I know. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll make it look more porous without putting like a ton of white in it. I'm a very OCD, now, now, now kind of guy. And I think that I've been doing pretty well at trying to keep my stress level down, because I don't want to frustrate April at all. She keeps me leveled. Can I get you anything, or? Yeah, I'm fine. I just don't want to let her down. Five, four, three, two, one. That is it. Machine's down. Time is up. No more ink. Oh, my god. Sticker, dude. Wow, man, that looks awesome. Well, my favorite line in your hands. Whole different kind of ball game, isn't it? Today, you had to face off proving your adaptability by freehanding your design directly on the skin with no reference. Golden skull tattoo. Aaron tattooed. Aaron, one thing we don't really want to see over and over again in this competition is the same old repetitive image. But I think you took a different approach of it. Design in there with the drop shadows and the highlights and the color, you were able to achieve a lot of depth. This tattoo is executed clean. All your outlines are really crisp. You get one shot at doing this with each line on these triangles, and I think you hit them really nicely. Part of the piece that I'm not a fan of, the anatomical section of the row of teeth that you did. It looks like it just goes flat straight back. You don't shade that back two teeth to give us that turn. It was kind of stylistic choices. That part for me throws the design. Look at my teeth. I told you they were too long. Artistic skin design. Dane, you tattooed. I really liked the different blends you have going on in the leaves. You were able to put some depth and dimension with the out-of-focus maple leaves background. It's really well done. It's very cleanly executed, saturated, nice line work, nice solid black, cool little highlights in the purple lip and the little webbing in the back of the cheek. But I think there's some areas anatomically that are weird. The way the brow furrows without really showing the other lid of the eye, there's a little bit of weirdness going on. You apply a clean tattoo, but there's four clean tattoos in the room. There's a lot of tough decisions to be made today. Aaron, you did something different, but not that different. Yeah. And it does have some anatomical issues, arguably. But the skull is still recognizable, and the shapes are where Understood. the shapes should be. But if you cover the teeth, the skull looks so much better. Right, but if you cover the teeth. Whereas I feel that Dane, it's a little bit more dimensional. It's a little bit more dynamic. But Dane would have benefited from some reference here. Dane would have benefited from another eye. I thought with that eye. Do you guys feel like the wolf's missing an eye? No, I think it's super stylized. I've never seen a wolf's mouth roll like that. Totally. I didn't want to be super safe with it. I like how weird and wacky it is. At the end of the day, to save your own ass, you want to make sure things line up. You don't want to create questions. Let's make a final decision. Anatomically, I would have to say that I would vote for artistic skin design to go home. The judges have decided artistic skin design. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. In this sea of people, all kinds of good tattoos are leaving. That's how it goes at the end. Please pack your machines and move out. Thank you.
All right, guys, you have six hours to tattoo the right armpit, and your time starts now. Yeah, like that. So look at me. Yep. Did it uh, line up okay? Yeah, it lined up great. Cool. Aaron is a great artist, so it's good to know I have a good road map and I don't have to worry about anything being messed up. I didn't realize that this would be directly putting us head to head with unkindness. So, at first I thought the whole goal of the second tattoo was just to match the tattoo that was done yesterday, and then I kind of realized that me and Doom are going head to head. Whoops. I am definitely nervous about this tattoo. It's a very high risk move on my part because it is extremely detailed and I'm just worried that the judges are not gonna think it's dynamic enough to compete against Marv's. That red is throwing me up. I might have you sit back down. I keep thinking I'm done with this guy and every time he stands up and I look at it in the mirror, I can see the parts that don't look finished to me. I'd have been done a while back. I wouldn't put the stretch marks, man. It's like checking out everybody's setup here. Nolan had a way more simple piece. Bubba's piece is way more dynamic. Sorry, man, I keep staring at it. You could take the win on this one. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, machine's down, time is up. No more ink. That's it. Check it out. Yes. What do you think, dude? <laughs> nice. This week, you showed placement by tattooing a painful and awkward part of the body, the armpits. The judges will compare your work side by side with two artists. The artist who completed the armpit tattoo that you started and the artist whose armpit tattoo you completed. Let's see how you did. Matt and DJ, you're up next. DJ, you started off with the Hanya mask. DJ, I like this tattoo. I think it looks super sharp. But the crooked face does bug me. The fact that the nose is curving and going one way and the teeth kind of not lining up, it's like a new school rendition of a Japanese tattoo. If you're going to twist it, twist it everywhere. When I see these, it makes me cringe because it's not a follow through. Bubba and Nolan. Hyper photo realism in an armpit. This is definitely a tough ask, but Nolan, I do think you capture the off the skin crawling creepy look. The subtle little shadows you have on the tips of the legs give it that 3D effect. Bubba, yours is really tonal throughout. As far as placement goes, man, your hand of the canvas had one tattoo already and you're supposed to add another one to match. You don't have a matching shape here. I think that throws it off. You gotta go with Nolan on this. I agree with that. Unanimous, Nolan, congratulations. Christian and Eva. A little bit of the tattoo goes in the armpit. I think it was a smart choice due to the stretch marks of the skin. But Eva, as far as putting this many concentric circles on this area of the body, I think might not have been the right choice. This thing is such a precise tool, so the variances throughout this thing are very obvious. Euless and Doom. Doom, did you design both of these tattoos? Our shop designed both of them. I drew the king. Because a pair of tattoos, they work really well together. All right, Doom, everywhere you have the fine lines in your design, it gets away from you, especially the fine detail inside the crown, and you lose it in the shape of her face. The sloping forehead with the bulbous nose isn't the most attractive look for this lady. This week, you had to tattoo coordinating armpit tattoos. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's go to the jury of peers. You voted Allegory Arts to the bottom. Why'd you make that decision, Christian? I think it was mostly just based on Eva's tattoo. Allegory voted for us as spite. Um, no, not out of spite. I noticed a lot of technical flaws in Christian's piece as well. Your tattoo is a little more challenging than Christian's, Eva. If you didn't try to do an Olympic ring tattoo in the center of a guy's armpit, you'd have been a little bit better off. But Euless, definitely the best tattoo you've done here. Unkindness Art. You know how I feel about your tattoo, Aaron. I think it's great. Technically, it's slick as The biggest problem with Doom Kitten's tattoo is the loss of translation from the drawing to the face. You didn't follow that stencil perfectly with the needle, and that's what I think happened to the face, too. It's true that he does have some, some more tricks to learn, but he is a fantastic artist, and he is a good tattooer. And I think that the fault in our team is the fact that I haven't been able to find the middle ground, not him. You guys are together, you did this team thing, suck it up and start making some tattoos that you do believe in. Old Town Inc. Bubba 
the decision of how to do this background, kill this tattoo for me. And then DJ, is it wacky? Is it new school? Is it Japanese? It has no home. Your guys' two tattoos are not bad tattoos. They just don't work for today. Don't leave questions. Just do what the thing's supposed to look like. It's crazy. You know, we have two losses, two losses, win and a loss. But on a standalone basis, most everybody here excelled. So this is going to be a really tough elimination. Chris. These whole different mixes that went down today make for big curveballs in this competition. Euless, you had a great drawing to work off. I think this is the best tattoo you did, but I think as a team, you guys mirror some of your good habits putting in color and some of your bad habits with your liners. When we're getting down to the nitty gritty, there's no room for error. My vote's for you guys. My vote is well. The judges have decided allegory arts. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. Please pack your machines and move out. All right, take care. For this tag team face-off, your competitors assigned you American traditional snakes. Fail, and your shop will be eliminated. You have six hours, and your time starts now. All right. Over. American traditional is difficult because most of these tattooers don't come up learning it. DJ, hold the sides of it real quick. I thought it needed to be tilted more. No. Snakes are difficult because the belly, the face, the scales, they're all moving and all have to move in cohesion. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. This should be a real kicker here because we see people f these up all the time. Here we go. Made a good mark? Yeah, yeah. Last time I was here, I certainly didn't have a strategy. Looks so good. My strategy is going to be just produce beautiful artwork. I hope that this impresses the judges because otherwise, we toast. That's a nice knife. Most of the American traditional snakes and daggers that I see, the daggers are straight. I think doing a curved dagger is a bad idea. I'm just trusting DJ in this one. We work the direction of the pepper if you can. Any tiny misstep can take you out of the finale, so this is do or die. Yeah. It's a snake. You don't need a weird dagger that looks like an owl. What red is that? DJ made it. As usual, DJ created this entire tattoo and Bubba just went for the ride. If there was a way to ride someone's coattails out the door, this is the way you're gonna do it. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, machine's down, time is up, no more ink. Man, that was brutal. So badass. Yeah. Oh, it's badass to the maximum. <laughs> I think it's great, dude. Yeah, man. Old Town has to go home for this one. It's very cluttered, and I don't even feel like it looks like American traditional. Their snake is terrible. I think it's so rad. Today, you had to face off, proving the strength of your shop. Basilica tattoos and unkindness art, you're safe from elimination this week. For the face off, they assigned American traditional snakes. And based on your work, one shop will be eliminated. Empire State Studio. At first glance, I really like the layout. I love the shape of the body. It has a nice flow to it that curves around. But the problem for me, design-wise, is you have some belly scales that are doing conflicting things. After the head, the first five are these little C-shape from one to the next. And then you start this S-curve that doesn't tell you which direction this belly scale is going. Old Town Inc love the belly on this covert. The little fanciness around the belly plate where you double line, it's badass. But one issue that I have is if you're going to have a weapon, would you put your knife blade facing the front of your hand that you would grab it for, or would you put the handle facing the direction so you can use it? That's my fault. Bubba wanted to do a straight dagger. I was like, nah, that fits the S curve of the thigh. I think you just got a couple of hiccups in this one. Judges, it is time to determine who is going home. This is gonna be tough, man. Empire State kind of captures the look, but then you flip over to Old Towns. They went with a more intricate design, which I think didn't come out as legible. Too fancy. It looks like a watercolor tattoo flash painting. Yeah. There's also a directional issue with this weapon. Yeah, but Empire State, the direction of the belly scales, it's a bigger boo-boo. But I mean, when I look at Empire States, I'm like, I know exactly what that is. When I'm standing next to the Old Town design, I have to do a little math. It gets lost. I'd like to say that Marvin and I, we work on these together. No one's carrying the load for either of us. He does 50-50 all the time, you know? And I'd be a fool to try and take the rein on a lot of things that he excels at. I appreciate where you're all coming from on this. Let's get into a decision here. 
if I base it strictly on today's work, we come back and forth with this pink bomb. If I look at the three tattoos we've seen this week, Old Town definitely edges them out. My vote is Empire State. My vote is also for Empire State Studio. The judges have decided Empire State Studio. You do not have what it takes to be master shot. It's always tricky putting yourself on the line and coming back, it takes balls. Please pack your machines and move out. All right, guys, you have six hours to tattoo an Asian deity, and your time starts now. All right, oh, let's go. Let's do this. Get it. I think we should try to include this somehow. This deity's name literally translates to eight banners, and this tattoo needs to look like the deity, so it has to have these banners. I still think it's an afterthought, but we have the time. I don't know, man. I still think it's super risky. We go home if that's not finished. Well, we might go home if it's not in there at all. Whatever you want to do, because I don't. We end up doing that anyway. That clock never stops ticking, and now no one wants to double the size of the tattoo. If this doesn't work, it's on him. I think this looks great. Yeah. The layout is beautiful. It's simple. I use the same goofy anatomy as far as the drawing goes, but that's his deity. He's supposed to be pleasant and jolly. I love that. I know. The pressure of the competition is so high, and it's definitely getting to some people. Basilica's doing a samurai warrior. I just learned what a deity is, and 100% the definition is not just a samurai warrior. Traditional Japanese? Yeah. Black Cobra needs to worry about going home. For a sun goddess, this black moon in the background definitely isn't hitting the challenge. If backwards hands don't get you sent home, I don't know what will send you home. What you guys doing? He's the god of eight banners, so we're adding his banners. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, it's cool. I came in this competition to be able to show the world what I can do. Growing up, I was kind of always the outcast. Drawing was kind of my escape. So it might not be too bad because they are super simple. Yeah, we'll definitely win the competition. It's just a matter of how we're going to win this competition. If we pull it off, it'll be all right. That's right. You get 10 seconds left anyways. Crazy nah. speed. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up, machines down. No more ink. <sighs> Killed it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, he's super cool. I feel strongly like this is a winner. Cool. <laughs> Dare I say bulletproof? I think bulletproof is appropriate. I think it's badass. Oh. Hey guys. How do y'all feel like y'all did? Uh, awesome. Good. Yeah. <laughs> what are y'all gonna do about those backwards thumbs? That's how he holds his hands. Every single depiction, he's palms yeah, in. Yeah, see how yours are in the front? They're goofy-ass hands. Intentionally goofy? Yeah, it's a goofy-ass fat dude. With thumbs on the wrong side of his hands. That was intentional? It's an illustration of a fictional character. Clean, I know that you're very charming, and I hope you can charm the judges into believing why your hand is backwards. All right, bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs> Look at this bye. asshole. Look, you're pretty Bye. Right. You did it right. You, you totally, Bye. we should have just used you as reference. See y'all later. <laughs> Today, you had to show cohesion by tattooing a complex image, an Asian deity. Let's see how you did. Black Cobra tattoos, let's start with you. All right, guys, what did your canvas ask for? I'm a Tarasu. She is the goddess of the sun. I really like the tattoo. I like the design. The elements within it work cohesively together. The little details you have in the kimono are really beautifully, meticulously put in there. My only worry is the background and then the rocks in the foreground seem to be very, very close in tone. We did want to put heavier shading in the background because she is classically depicted coming out of a cave with the sun behind her head. Wait, so she's emerging? from a cave? I thought it was the moon, because it looked like night. Right. Everything is just set pure black, so you lose the interpretation of the story of the design. Right now, for all practical purposes, she's dancing in the moonlight. That makes no sense. Golden skull tattoo. All right, guys, first issue. You know what it is? No, what is it? The hands. Good, good. Obviously, you got the left hand on the right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I mean, we weren't trying to do a portrait. Nobody does this anyway. We're trying to do a funny, happy-go-lucky, goofy character. You hit that everywhere, minus in the hands. You definitely capture the look of this particular rendition of Ote. Aside from that, the black cloud, I can't stand it. It's just very haphazardly done, and that negative line that goes through there kills the bottom of this design. This is a tough break for you guys. Basilica tattoos. 
technically, it's a clean tattoo. You got a lot of clean line work on the shin. Utterly dislike that you guys did not do his full body. You guys should have done a full body, just to be on par with everybody. Midway through, we were kind of concerned that it wasn't showing enough of the aspects of the god, so Nolan came up with an idea I almost killed him for, and with just a couple hours left, we added the banners. The flags are not finished. They don't have the black in there. The cherry blossoms are missing the actual green foliage where they grow off. Just things like that. I feel like I'm looking out of a page of a sketchbook. Today, you had to prove your cohesion as a shop. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's hear from the jury of peers. Why did you vote Golden Skull to the bottom? It was almost 50-50, so everybody had different opinions on all of them. Like, I voted for Black Cobra. My question is, why did Golden Skull get voted to the bottom? It's just a backwards hand thing. I think is a general consensus that nobody can get past that. I think the outcome of this day potentially would have been different if the thumbs were placed in a different spot. Nobody noticed until people that were hating pointed it out. It is up. But I do think that people will look at this and be like, it's Buddha. Basilica did not do what the challenge asked for in that sense. It met the parameters of the challenge and gave him what he wanted. No, no, no. You had to do a deity. That was the deal. A mask is not a deity. But if I do a portrait of Jesus, I don't need his whole body. He's still a deity. But you'll see that it's Jesus. Until you put that samurai's ghost in the shell, a samurai's a samurai, not a deity. To me, that's not a tattoo that goes home. That's a badass tattoo. Black Cobra also, without a doubt, did not show the deity. She is the goddess of the light, but they definitely cast night into the depiction. Also, her forearm goes from her chin down past the bottom of the sword. Your forearm doesn't do that. If it's not glaringly obvious, when I first saw their hands on their Buddha, I knew immediately that they were backwards. Oh yeah, you were the first one to tell me. But the point is that I just don't see the story coming through as well as anatomical connections and issues. Random, longer body parts, those are all things that still come into play in the normal tattoo that we judge. All right, judges, time to determine who's going home. Somebody that works for me does a tattoo with the hands on backwards. I don't think it's a small mistake. Looking at report cards, how many wins do you guys have? Two. Our shot one on Armor Day and Portrait Day. I heard a lot of wins on Golden Skull. I didn't hear any wins on Black Cobra. Two and two, none. Black Cobra, based on these report cards. Based on the report cards? Yeah. Also based on the tattoos? There's equal problems. I'm the guy who comes in and gets tattooed. I would be bummed out on these hands. My vote is for Golden Skull. The judges have decided Golden Skull tattoo. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. <laughs> Sucks. For the record, I think you guys are one of the better bunches, and your report card proves it. Please pack your machines and move out. I'm going to get right to the point. This girl's got two right feet. What? She's got two right feet. There's two big toes in the grass. James, tell me what's up. Whoops. I wasn't even paying attention. You have six hours to tattoo a pinna. And your time starts now. Back. Yay! I've never done a pinup quite like this before. I'm not confident with this design at all. The whole tattoo is a mess. I don't think I'm showing ingenuity at all. I picked the worst time to do a tattoo. Today, you had to show ingenuity by transforming your canvas's significant other into a pinup tattoo. Mike. It seems to be riddled with anatomical problems. Your shoulders are not remotely accurate. This right arm appears to bend in two or three places. It's a little weird, man. This is the first tattoo that I second-guessed myself from the very beginning. The more you look at it, the more the faults start to add up. The flag is attached to the pole upside down. The maple leaf is like pointing upwards, but yet the flag is coming across and the top of the flag is actually here. If you think about that flag being on that pole, then it is mounted upside down. From the bottom of the flag down, the tattoo looks fine. The legs are nice. From that flag up, disastrous. Let's hear from the jury of peers. Team Nunez, why did you vote Mike to the bottom? A pinup has to be anatomically correct, so it's pretty easy and clear cut to decide. I'm with these guys. 
That thing is so jacked up, doesn't look anything like the subject, it is anatomically all over the place. Just looks like she was in a blender. Yeah, it was out of character for me. You have six hours to tattoo an American traditional design. That includes an eagle and a flag. Remember, we're testing you online. Your time starts now. Yeah. How does that look? Oh, yeah. I think I might go on the side. Thinking about going on yeah. the side? Once the canvas suggested that he wants to do this on the ribs, I was a little bit worried because that's one of those areas that is iffy. How'd you sit for that first one? That's fine. I'll, I'll be good. Sure? Positive. Now we're under time constraints, and I have the pressure of doing lines on the lower rib cage. You picked a good guy to do this tattoo because I tattoo at Fort Knox. All I do is like military guys every day, day in and day out. Cool. Eagles, flags, a lot of the guys in here have no idea when it comes to yeah. traditional. Three hours, guys, halfway there. This challenge is just frustrating. It's I could be overthinking it. They keep pushing in my head, this is a line challenge. If I give you a load of lines in all different shapes, sizes, and colors, then there you go. Where did you come up with the reds on this one here? It's not a realistic description of the American flag. Lalo is doing a flag that's anything but an American flag. He is showing that he is not an American. This is red, right? Go on and ends up red here. I mean, of course, it's not a realistic. We would have, we would have to fold it out. Yeah, but let me talk. I, I'll let right. you talk. Uh, let me talk. I just want the lines to match up. If you do the flag the way it goes down, which is right, his or this? I can't get involved in this. If you have a guy who's an American patriot, he wants an American flag. Who knows what Lalo's doing, but it's not an American flag, and it's jacked. You're the one who has to work with these for the rest of your life. Yes, I do. It's up to you. If we were in the 60s right now and you step off a boat and got a tattoo and then got back on and went in active <laughs> duty as a sailor, that's what you, I want your tattoo there you to look go. like. One hour remaining. You're doing well. His skin is doing some funny things. The needle hits and uh, get burst the ink in certain places. Kay's lines are extremely crooked. His red stripe is touching the blue on the flag. His 80-year-old veteran client is gonna hate that. Kay should be booted out of the house. My canvas pain tolerance is sinking and sinking really, really fast. And those are words that you really don't want to hear when you're tattooing. Almost there, man. Oh. Almost there. I wipe away and that line's got a little bump in it. Flag is the only wonky part that I got. Just hoping that somebody else up worse than I do. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up, machine's down, no more ink. That's fantastic. I'm so happy with this, like you don't even understand. Nice, huh? I feel like a lot of these artists didn't really put their hearts in these tattoos because they don't really respect the style of traditional tattooing, so I feel real confident today that I'll be in the top. The way you did it, man, it's, it's respectful, it's, it's, it's tight. By putting the snake and dagger in the tattoo, I'm trying to do kind of risky things that are a little bit different, so the judges go, wow. Nick thinks he knows everything, and he's just a young, stupid idiot. What the f is he doing with this blue f This is old school, not new school, fool. This week, we went old school and had you tattoo an American traditional design with an eagle and a flag, giving us similar elements to judge. We're testing you online. Sebastian. I really like this. It's rough, it's tough, it's not prissy. And then I noticed something. What do you think I noticed? It's flying backwards on that guy's arm. The head's supposed to point out. If I have subject matter and I have a face here, do I want it looking at my ass or do I want it staring at my enemy? You want it looking forward. You don't want it looking backwards. The ass backward eagle is a toughie. Jamie. Overall, the line weight for the size of the tattoo is a little thin. There's a few weak lines in this tattoo, like the top of the eagle's wing and some of the banner. One of my biggest complaints about this is the lettering up top. Little Rock is two words. 
Not on the ship, though. It wasn't Little Rock, Arkansas. It was Little Rock, and it was all one word. I sure? checked it with him, and I double-checked it. Every battleship and cruiser and aircraft carrier is named after a city, and the ship is definitely named after the city. I went with what he said. If the guy told you he wanted it all in one word, then that is fine, but it's definitely two words. Trey, how is this process for you? I feel a little more confident because it's something I do on a regular basis. There's some real problems with the anatomy of the eagle. The wings, you know, one's coming out of the neck and the other one is coming out of the lower back. Well, I went by a reference I found on the internet. But you can't see? You tell me where that wing comes from. This whole entire thing, it's like the wing goes this way, broke the body this way, broke the legs and positioned them wherever the There's no way. It's brutal. Lalo. I do a lot of birds, so I was actually afraid that that was gonna affect the way I did the eagle, because maybe I was gonna get too technical. My favorite eagle out of the bunch? Well, thank you. Man, what the <laughs> with this flag? Five stars, seven stripes. It's an impossible twist. It's not a realistic thing, so. It's not possible. All these things have strict symbolism. The number of stripes, the order of the stripes. I can't get over the flag on a vet. This guy's put his life on the line for this blanket of freedom. I'd have been scared of that guy ripping my throat out. Artist, you have six hours to create a schematic tattoo. And your time starts now. Let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna have you stand right here. Okay. I think I just noticed it's facing the wrong way. The blade should be on this side. If we flip it, then it's not true to the knife. Yeah, it is. I don't know about that. I know about that. <laughs> no, I know you do, but I'm saying, like, there's also rules to what we do. Yeah, but my left arm is right. this way. <laughs> I could just flip it around. Yeah. It's your tattoo. It's permanent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just flip it. Just give me, like, two minutes. Yep. With the redness and the swelling, I'll use witch hazel. It helps. Nice. My canvas has skin tags and moles all throughout his forearm. So my lines aren't as straight as they usually are. I got my first tattoo like the day I turned 18. <laughs> my mom is like, what is that? I've come from a very strict religious upbringing and tattoos are definitely not something you want to do. She's so, all, that better be a fake tattoo. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, about to go wash up right now. My late brother, he passed less than a year ago. He was really like the only one who was very supportive. One of the last things that he said to me, he was like, Arlene, you should, you could win. Like, you could totally do that. I don't want to let him down. I want to be an inspiration and honor my brother. Today, you are being tested on legibility with schematic tattoos. Arlene. You had a lot of problems with the line work here. The edge of the knife, that line work jumps around like crazy. Then you have the seven inch, that line is out of control. His skin was really difficult to deal with. There's a way to put tattoos in all kinds of skin and you didn't get it on this tattoo. I would rather have the knife. Every line still has a problem. You tried to save the outline of the blade by putting shading next to it, but the line is still really shaky and the black is not solid up to it. I had difficult skin to deal with. You put a straight line over a skin tag, it's gonna wobble. I do have to say something. There's an issue that wasn't brought up about the knife. The handle's actually upside down. It's that, not. That guard there where your finger goes, goes under the knife so that way you don't cut your hand. Mm -hmm. That's true. You're showing an improper layout. My canvas decided to flip the direction of the knife at the last minute because he wanted the wording to read facing outward as it should be, not upside down, which means the handle is the other way. You should have turned the handle the other way. I gave him what he wanted. It's incorrect. It's bullshit. Just think consistency in numerals, consistency in application. My vote's for Arlene. The judges have decided, Arlene, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Keep your head up and be proud. Please pack your machines and close shop. Yeah. Morning, everybody. It's time for you all to tap into your proportion skills and tattoo a pinup girl on your human canvas. You'll be judged on the proportion of your pinup. You have five hours to complete your tattoo. The clock starts now. Oh my god. That's perfect, dude. Great pinup tattoos consist of beautiful features from the hair 
to the toes. The artist's main job here is to play with proportion. If you don't do the exaggeration the right way, it's going to be obviously off. I've done a lot of details in this tattoo. I'm a little exhausted, tired. This competition has been mentally challenging. We're working on limited sleep. I'm ready to finish this and prove myself. I'm feeling pretty confident about my uh, pinup, especially after seeing Leah's. Leah's had a crazy arm on it. I don't know what happened to her stencil, whether it rubbed off or something, but it's, I'm feeling a little more confident now. Welcome to tonight's elimination. Only five of you left. And this week, you were tested on your proportion skills by tattooing a pinup girl. James Vaughn. I'm gonna get right to the point. This girl's got two right feet. What? She's got two right feet. There's two big toes in the grass. James, tell me what's up. Whoops. I wasn't even paying attention. For real, this is a mistake, man. I mean, I get it, but you're a consistent tattooer. I don't know what happened. I, I figured I didn't, I didn't fuck it up too bad, in my, in, in my opinion. He lost it in the mouth, man. The shape of that top lip and the teeth, man, it's just scary looking. This is to find out who's the most well-rounded. Do you regret taking the shoes off the design? Yeah, I was like flabbergasted. I'm more upset for the customer because it's my job to make the best tattoo for my client, you know? And I try to pay attention to detail. It was just one thing that's, you know, it's a cardinal sin, you know? I'm not gonna make up any type of excuse whatsoever. For today's elimination tattoo, we're testing your fundamental tattoo skills. You have six hours, and your time starts now. Are you nervous? Oh, super nervous. Super nervous? Yes. Oh, great. Well, you know what? So am I. <laughs> I'm really, really, really excited about this. I think I'm really gonna impress the judges. The placement's great. I'm using a lot of pretty color. I'm determined to show the judges that I know what I'm doing. I'm not doing so bad. Good CJ, keep rocking. I actually think CJ's tattoo is pretty weak, and this might be a bit of a dick move, but I'm actually encouraging her. Sometimes a false sense of security goes a long ways. It's one spot, man, it's not good. I'm pissed at myself, I'm disappointed with myself. Just wish I would have had the time to, like, really do those little tiny tweaks. These judges are gonna tear me up. It's gonna be way brutal. Welcome, artists. This was the judge's first chance to see what you can do on real live skin. This week, your elimination tattoo was giving a virgin their first ink. We were testing your fundamentals. CJ. How are you doing? I'm freaking out. I'm not a fan of the colored outline. Well, I was kind of going for a softer feel. That brown outline looks like Look at the outline of that hand. I believe that over time, it's gonna get even worse. There's a lot of stuff done almost exclusively with color, and I, th I think it holds up great over time. You did a pretty face, which bums me out, because if you would've just done it with a black outline, you would be standing in different shoes. You've had a rough start. Man, your ink blew up and this and that. I know, dude, I feel you, and I wanna see you do great and you prove that you kind of know how to do certain things by doing that face that way but how do you do that face and then just move off to the right and lose it you got to pick it up CJ K Cutter neither of you impressed us tonight CJ let's take a look at your tattoo can you read for us what it says on that banner first Corinthians 13, one through seven. Read it again. Sound it out phonetically. Cor... Corinthians is misspelled. What happened there? I don't know. I don't know how I missed that. 80 to 90% of what I do is a cover up. So for me, it's an easy fix. How are you gonna make that T and I? If, if I plug it real hard with some whites and ochres. Then what do you do about the jacked up word? It's just a difference between an I and a T. That's an easy fix. You should work at a plastic surgeon's office then because you'd make a load of money. I call total bull on that theory. I don't believe it. Either one of you could justifiably be sent home tonight. The judges have decided.
CJ, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack up your machines and close up shop. You have six hours to tattoo an Asian deity, and your time starts now. All right, oh, let's go. Let's do this. Get it. We need to figure out this background. I have something sweet from this side. Even that's too much, I think. Bring that here. We'll make a bunch more stencils. Why are his thumbs on the inside? Yeah, thumbs on top. That's how it goes. OK, OK. That works. <laughs> I have to look at myself in the mirror really quick. OK. I'm not trying to be super obvious about it right now, but the way that Queen and Aaron drew their Buddha, the hands are lifted up inwards, but the thumbs are on the backs of the hands. Yeah, it's impossible. That's impossible. That means a win for us. <laughs> Let's not repeat it. Let's not say anything. Right. I want him to get that outline in before he realizes it. For sure. But they totally f themselves doing backwards thumbs. I think this is great. Yeah. The layout is beautiful. It's simple. I use the same goofy anatomy as far as the drawing goes, but that's this deity. He's I supposed know. to be pleasant and jolly. I love that. Oh. Holy crap. It is definitely the wrong hands. 100%. Yeah. No doubt. Oh, that poor canvas. Too late now. <laughs> Killed it. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah, he's super cool. Hey, guys. How do y'all feel like y'all did? Uh, awesome. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are y'all going to do about those backwards thumbs? That's how he holds his hands. Every single depiction, he's palms yeah, in. Yeah, see how yours are in the front? They're goofy-ass hands. Intentionally goofy. Yeah, it's a goofy-ass fat dude. With thumbs on the wrong side of his hands. That was intentional? It's an illustration of a fictional character. Clean, I know that you're very charming, and I hope that you can charm the judges into Just believing shorter. why your hand is backwards. All right, bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs> Look at this bye. asshole. Look, you're pretty Bye. smart. You did it right. You, you totally, Bye. we should have just used you as reference. See y'all later. <laughs> Today, you had to show cohesion by tattooing a complex image, an Asian deity. Golden skull tattoo. All right, guys, first issue. You know what it is? No, what is it? The hands. Good, good. Obviously, you got the left hand on the right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I mean, we weren't trying to do a portrait. Nobody does this anyway. We're trying to do a funny, happy-go-lucky, goofy character. You hit that everywhere, minus in the hands. You definitely capture the look of this particular rendition of Hote. Aside from that, the black cloud, I can't stand it. It's just very haphazardly done, and that negative line that goes through there kills the bottom of this design. This is a tough break for you guys. All right, judges, time to determine who's going home. Somebody that works for me does a tattoo with the hands on backwards. I don't think it's a small mistake. How many wins do you guys have? Two. I shot one on Armpit Day and Portrait Day. I heard a lot of wins on Golden Skull. I didn't hear any wins on Black Cobra. Two and two. None. Black Cobra. Based on these report cards. Based on the report cards? Yeah. Also based on the tattoos? There's equal problems. I'm the guy who comes in and gets tattooed. I would be bummed out on these hands. My vote is for Golden Skull. The judges have decided Golden Skull Tattoo. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. <laughs> Sucks. For the record, I think you guys are one of the better bunches, and your report card proves it. Please pack your machines and move out. Just the fact you don't count the bottom teeth in between the canines, that's just mind-blowing to me, to have seven teeth. But they're all straight. Yeah, straight to the garbage. That's where those go. To prove your adaptability, you must draw your tattoo directly onto your canvas's skin freehand. Wow. You cannot use any stencils, and you must draw from scratch oh, wow. with no reference. Freehand and no reference? Jesse's made a name for himself being an illustrator and coming up with images off the top of his head. A screw. This is exactly what I need, because I want to do something crazy. I want to do what I do. This is my comfort zone. 
Guys, this is the ultimate competitive platform right here. This is right out of your brain, right onto the skin. Go at it. Let's bring in your canvases. You have six hours to tattoo, and your time starts now. Let's get it on! Jesse Smith and Anthony Michaels could easily make it to the finale. One of them's not. I specialize in little critters, rabbits, squirrels. I do the googly eyes and teeth. These two tattooers have such a different background. Yeah, we can do like a traditional eagle or something. That's cool. And yeah, that'll surprise the judges because they wouldn't expect that. Typically, experience is everything, but there are times where inexperience creates hunger and creates drive. I know the judges wouldn't expect it either, but I'm going to murder this We'll have to see how Anthony does going up against a veteran that knows all the tricks. I'm just drawing right now, seeing what comes out. This is the first time in this competition that I've got a piece of open skin to do whatever I want. I'm taking advantage of it. I can't even figure out what Jesse's drawing. I can't even know. This tattoo right here is a game changer. If I win, then I've knocked Anthony out, one of the strongest competitors, and I have an easier path to the finale. I'm ready to show these guys what I'm made of. I screwed up the American traditional clipper ship. I have to redeem myself. I'm tattooing a freehand eagle across the shoulder blades of my canvas. I'm out for blood. I'm creating something that's badass. All right, guys, you have four hours remaining. Ooh, dang. I think right now Anthony's balls might be bigger than his head. He wants to impress the judges, but I need him to maintain control so that we can make it to the end like we planned. So just really, really, like, concentrate on making sure you go just perfect to make sure you're just technically on point. Everybody's helping Anthony out. Nobody's trying to help me out. Make sure you do tough clothes. I got three on top and then one on the bottom. They have four. Yeah, three on top, one on the bottom. I'm not competing against one person on this tattoo. I'm competing against five. I'm pretty sure it's three and one. But you know what? Adaptability is being able to take a bad situation and make it good. Everybody's going to help Anthony because Jesse's tattoo is coming straight from his head. It's not going to be very easy to critique. I think you should tell him I didn't eagle because he eats little googly eyed creatures. Anything you say about it, he could just explain away in some imaginary fairy tale story. This particular guy lives in the Creotic Sea, preys on skimper fish. I don't know why Anthony's choosing to do traditional today when he doesn't do traditional. Maybe he's got a point to prove. Five, four, three, two. One, that is it, time is up, machine's down, no more ink. Woo. Down to the wire. Good job, David, it's badass. You can't get a more different approach on each one, you know? Pretty crazy, man. Jesse was smart, doing something that he loves to do. Big-eyed, crazy creatures. Your muppet's got toofus I don't know what the hell it is. Well, they can't get you on anatomy, because nobody knows what the f that thing is. But I think it should be way more saturated than it is. Jesse's supposed to be the color guy. Go figure. Today, you faced off to prove your adaptability by freehanding your design directly onto the skin with no reference. Jesse, let's start with you. So what are we looking at here? This is a uh, Aka Bunny fish. It's pretty much straight from my head. It's a very creative tattoo. Definitely recognizable as your style of artwork. But at first glance, it's a little bit confusing. The way the body turns around the back and what's going on. Are there supposed to be stitches that are holding the thing together in the back? Yeah, this particular character, he's been through some bad times. He relies on the pattern on the sides to attract other fish so he can have a meal for the day. It makes me sad to know that he probably won't last that long because he can't move like a normal fish. Things crazy. You know, there's really nothing you can say about what this is because it's something totally created out of your mind. I think it's a great creative approach. There's some areas that are really shining, the nose, the fang, the little textures that really stand out strong, but there's some saturation issues, some muddy colors, like the orange spots that look scratchy and unfinished, and there's some areas that I think could have been a little brighter instead of that pale yellow. Overall, it has a more muted, washed out feel. This was your chance to really do something super bright and poppy on pale skin. Well, Jesse, there's no doubt about your creativity, but then looking at the consistency of the outline, you have a lot of different line weights. You have some areas where you get a little gray or you have some thickness where it looks like you had to pick up in some spots. Overall, you did a really cool image. This is gonna boil down completely on both sides of the table to technicalities. Anthony. This isn't really the most traditional eagle in the world. I wanted that feel. I know there's so much more about traditional tests and there's so many rules involved. So I wanted to be a little looser, but keep some elements of traditional being the black. And I tried to simplify the design as much as I could. But have you drawn a lot of these eagles? No. 
drawing an eagle like this from memory, very risky. Just going from nothing and coming up with an aesthetically pleasing look, I think it's a great take. I love this outline throughout. Big, nice, crisp, but there's some questionable ways you did the feathers in the wings. I didn't want the wings to look so uniform. I shouldn't be able to see the feather lines go all the way to the base. That black should be black enough to where those lines disappear into the blackness. Where, to me, things get short is the color. I don't love the brown stripes off the yellow in talons and in the wings. It doesn't speak to me as powerfully as everything else in the tattoo. What are you guys' thoughts? It's not apples to apples. Definitely taking a risk doing a style you're not familiar with. I think as a personal triumph for Anthony, I was happy to watch him swing for the fences on that one. I see more hiccups on the eagle outline than that one. You know, everybody's like, ah, it's just so crazy. But there's a science to doing what he does because there's 100,000 guys out there trying to do exactly what he does, but it doesn't work. So there is a right and wrong way to do a crazy character like that. When you look at that, you're like, that's Jesse Smith. But then if you're creating a fantasy character, I have to look at the character and believe that it can function. Jesse's arm coming directly out from underneath the cheek didn't look like it functioned. And then the fin, I don't understand if that's on its back or if it's coming down a ridge or something. I drew it all on, and as far as adapting from what I normally do, I drew with the tattoo machine while I was going. There was a lot of decisions I made that weren't on there when I started. Which artist is going home? I feel like there's some technical problems with both these tattoos. We will all agree that both have some kind of anatomy issue. We all agree that some areas of each of the tattoo are light, where I would say that there's a gap would come down to outlines. Definitely, Anthony's tattoo has a much stronger outline. Looking at it line by line, pass by pass, stroke by stroke, the finesse that's in that outline, that is what's really strong. In terms of overall readability and maybe just taking it up a notch, Anthony may have stepped a little bit further out of his comfort zone. My final decision, Jesse. Jesse. The judges have decided, Jesse, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Thank you for the second opportunity. I appreciate it. Jesse, you do something that is really your own thing. But then the fact that you tell us a sad story about the fish means you're actually thinking it through, which is a true sign of an artist. But it came down today to the simplest part of the whole tattoo, the outline. Please pack your machines and close shop. All right, guys, you'll have three hours to freehand your designs and then six hours to tattoo. Based on your work, one shop will be out. And your drawing time starts now. What's up, buddy? Picasso, nice to meet you. Other than background, I wouldn't go crazy. We don't need to overcomplicate it. Oh, oh, oh Luke is talking about not overcomplicating. I'm just trying to make it simple. Me too. My approach is to do something simple and very readable for Lalo to tattoo. All he has to do is follow my lines and really make this amazing. All right, guys. You have six hours to tattoo. And your time starts now. Let's go. Let's do it. This week, the tattooers are being judged on artistry. Freehanding is something that I want to know that an ink master is going to be able to do. Drawing straight on the skin, going directly to your outline with your machine. No stencils. I'll be done when the time starts, I promise. You shush. Did you say that? He's killing me right now. The person who's drawing has to quarterback the tattoo throughout because they see the vision, and they have to translate that to the person that's inking it. Anytime you do something I don't like, I'm going to go. For this challenge, we decided it's best if I just walk away and let Lalo do his thing. Sometimes we don't work very good when we're sitting over each other's shoulder. Do us proud, Lalo. Don't worry, your pretty little head. I got it. Please don't screw this up for us. I'm a little disappointed in House of Monkey, only because I know Picasso is just a monster. It's cool, but he's just so much better than that. Picasso. Yeah. You wanna take a look? He is going crazy. That color palette makes no sense whatsoever. Don't be nervous. It's a good day at House of Monkey. We were supposed to have a nice amount of black and a simple color palette. We didn't need all this blue. Lalo, you had one job. The colors, man. How did it feel for you? Feel good? I did a big ass tattoo, perfect lines. What did you and you like? No, no, I, I would've, there's huh? just a couple things I would've did different. But, I mean, of course. You know, you're in the driver's seat. Today you had to prove your artistry. House of Monkey. 
Picasso did the drawing and Lalo tattooed. I like the drawing a lot, but my only problem with the tattooing is the colors. The problem with this tattoo is this big, scratchy baby blue bubble on the top and this light green that's not finished in these cactus. It's not solid, it's not smooth, just a lot of sloppiness. Today, you had to freehand directly onto the skin with no stencil. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. Let's hear from the jury of peers. Why did you vote Black Spade tattooed at the bottom? A lot of the fundamental technical issues were called out. And we felt that House of Monkey had a stronger overall design than Black Spade did. All we needed was a few more things to make this crispy and complete. I think that what they made might have been more of a mess than what you're seeing here. It's mm -hmm. a tough debate. I feel like House of Monkeys, it's a strong line drawing, but there's just a lot of peach, a lot of baby blue, none of which is really applied very well. All right, it is time to determine who is going home. You know, it's tricky. I admire the artistry in House of Monkey, but the color play within Black Spade is more pleasing. My vote is for House of Monkey as well. House of Monkey. The judges have decided. House of Monkey. You do not have what it takes to be master shot. I respect you coming back, trying to make it, but for you guys, as artistic and free as you are, this place is too restrictive. Please pack your machines and move out. All right, guys. Welcome to the face-off. Basilica Tattoo, Golden Skull Tattoo, Old Town Ink, and Artistic Skin Design. Based on your work today, one shop will be eliminated. Bubba, Aaron, Christian, Dane, because you did not tattoo one of the four horsemen, you must tattoo in this face-off. Fair enough. Your teammate can consult, but cannot draw or tattoo. It's on you alone to keep your shop in this competition. To prove your adaptability, you must draw your tattoo directly onto your canvas's skin freehand. You cannot use any stencils, and you must draw from scratch with no reference. Oh. Each been randomly assigned a canvas, and the subject and style of your design is completely up to you. Yes. Do something that you know is going to rival the people in the room, and then deliver your best technical application. Looking at how you tattoo these things directly from a pen is all going to show in this challenge. Today could be a major curve. You have six hours to tattoo, and your time starts now. He's a happy wolf. I'm a big fan of weird, wacky imagery, and I like to make really weird animal heads. Hey, Dane, one thing to keep in mind <laughs> that kind of looks like his snout is being turned forward. Isn't it? So it'd be more like this. Don't go too big. I'm not. At the bottom of the mouth, it's kind of weird. The nose is too straight on. It needs to be like a little bit more facing this way. It's hard to separate what the judges want, what my teammates think I should do, what I think I should do. Like, I got three voices in my head, and they're all yelling. You should put cherry blossoms around it. You guys all want to do crazy ideas and awesome things that if I had more time and could draw it, I totally would. Yeah. But I don't want to put too much I'd have gone bigger. The little bangers aren't going to get you to the end, I'll tell you that. I don't even know if we're going to have to do much work to break this alliance apart. They seem to be doing it to themselves. Everybody's crowded around Dan, giving him advice. If they don't screw this guy up, I'm going to be blown away. I have a feeling me and her are going to do just fine today. Are you putting white in the whiskers, or? Uh, I want to leave the skin tone. OK. Having so many ideas thrown at Dane right now is just becoming overwhelming. Keep your head down and just blast through this, all right? I'm trying the best. He's kind of freaking out a little bit. I'm doing it. Going AWOL. What are you doing? The nose. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to make it look more porous without putting, like, kind of white in it. I'm a very OCD, now, now, now kind of guy. And I think that I've been doing pretty well at trying to keep my stress level down, because I don't want to frustrate April at all. She keeps me leveled. Can I get you anything, or? Yeah, I'm fine. I just don't want to let her down. Today, you had to face off proving your adaptability by freehanding your design directly on the skin with no reference. Artistic skin design. Dane, you tattooed. 
I really liked the different blends you have going on in the leaves. You were able to put some depth and dimension with the out of focus maple leaves background. It's really well done. It's very cleanly executed, saturated, nice line work, nice solid black, cool little highlights in the purple lip and the little webbing in the back of the cheek. But I think there's some areas anatomically that are weird. The way the brow furrows without really showing the other lid of the eye, there's a little bit of weirdness going on. You apply a clean tattoo, but there's four clean tattoos in the room. There's a lot of tough decisions to be made today. Whereas I feel that Dane, it's a little bit more dimensional. It's a little bit more dynamic. But Dane would have benefited from some reference here. Dane would have benefited from another eye. I fought with that eye. Do you guys feel like the wolf's missing an eye? No, I think it's super stylized. I've never seen a wolf's mouth roll like that. Totally. I didn't want to be super safe with it. I like how weird and wacky it is. At the end of the day, to save your own ass, you want to make sure things line up. You don't want to create questions. All right, let's make a final decision. Anatomically, I would have to say that I would vote for artistic skin design to go home. The judges have decided artistic skin design. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. In this sea of people, all kinds of good tattoos are leaving. That's how it goes at the end. Please pack your machines and move out. Thank you. You must draw your tattoo directly onto your canvas's skin freehand. You must push your skills to the limit and expertly finesse your design so that it fits the flow of your canvas's body perfectly. The subject and style of your tattoo is completely up to you. Right. You can't draw on the skin, you can't lay out a good tattoo, you can't be here. It's that easy. Please give us a hard decision. Please show us what you're good at. If you have a mental stencil, today's the day to break it out and use it. You're gonna need it. Based on your work, one of you will lose your shot at $100,000 and the title of Ink Master. You have six hours, and your time starts now. Young Ready? girl, this is your challenge. Ready to do it? Yes, sir. Let's get it. Let's do it. But they already did Honey Man, so what have you done to do? Whatever you want to do, just do it. I'm thinking about doing a honey mask because I know I could draw it and tattoo it in six hours. They don't care if they just did a honey mask. I'm, why the f would you care? This is the last tattoo you do ever. Make this the one you want to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking a huge risk with this tattoo. Team DJ just did it, but I know I could do a honey mask. I could keep up with DJs. He can tattoo. It's just his design sometimes is questionable. Yeah. And he'll have to figure that out. He's just picking something that, I mean, it was just done. Well, the funny part is you got two guys that are technically really good at tattooing. And the designs suffer a little bit. And two people can really design, yeah, their technical suffers a little bit. So who's gonna outdo who? Dude, if you do a hand you wonky, Chris is gonna know. That shows the best that they've got to offer. For me, they both should go home. With this tattoo, I'm showing that I do every style known to man. It looks exactly how I drew it. The color's bright, the line work is bold. There's no way I'm going home. That's pretty awesome, man. Killed it. Thanks, Thank man. You. Thanks for sitting good. Today, you faced off by freehanding your design directly onto the skin. Based on your work, one of you will be packing your machines. This is Jeremy. How did you feel about getting this challenge today? I'm very limited to what I can really draw like on the spot. It usually takes me a day or two to draw something perfect. So this is something I could draw that was easier for me to actually pull off a tattoo that's finished. There's a lot of things going on here. Instead of making it a long, slender face, it's really short and really wide. But what's throwing me here is the way you choose to color this thing. You put the yellow as the light source, but the light source is everywhere, but then the front of the face isn't yellow. This is a low rider panel paint job. You got red stripes and red panels and yellow stripes and yellow panels. I don't really like the color placements. Just the fact you don't count the bottom teeth in between the canines, that's just mind-blowing to me to have seven teeth. But they're all straight. Yeah, straight to the garbage. That's where those go. I give him credit for going for it. You could play safe day, but he really swung for it and obviously missed a little bit here, but he's got a fight in him, you know? People don't think he's fighting because he's quiet and he keeps to himself, but the dude's fighting. All right, guys, it is time to determine who's going home. I'm seeing the problems that you guys have with Jeremy's tattoo, but also as a canvas, if I got a shark that was all out of whack, I'd be a little bummed out about it. Rolly's black and gray, Rolly's line work. I think technically Rolly is stronger. But for me, if we go to Jeremy's, the problems I have are light source, construction, composition. It's a complete miss for that, Jeremy. The judges have decided, Jeremy, you do not 
have what it takes to be Ink Master. It's been a great learning experience, and I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to come here, man. Please pack your machines and close shop. All right, guys, for this face-off, you must draw your tattoo directly onto your canvas's skin freehand. No. Without using a stencil, you must push your abilities to the limit and skillfully finesse your design so that it flawlessly fits the flow of your canvas's body. The subject and style of your tattoo is completely up to you. I'm Everything I love to do is realistic, and it's really hard to freehand realism. Here's your chance. You get to show us what you can do directly on skin. Push yourselves to the limit. Make it legible. Make it clean. It's your job to be able to do it. If not, you shouldn't be here. Based on your work, one of you will lose your shot at $100,000 and the title of Ink Master. And this time, you have five hours, and your time starts now. Come on, guys. Let's All get right. it together. Today, these artists have to freehand. This will be where they pull their mental stencil and show us what they got. I thought it'd be cool to do a lucky crab claw, kind of like a lucky rabbit's foot. We're asking them to draw from their head and make it come to life. I'm doing a traditional yeah. rose and a crying heart. Depending on how time's looking, I might even do a realistic eye inside the crying heart. With color? Uh, yes. Yeah? Nice. This is totally outside my wheelhouse, but it's definitely something I know I can draw off the top of my head. You've got to splay them leaves a little bit. Otherwise, they just two of them pointing the exact same. Are these spread enough, or do you think? No. No. I'd do one this way, one this way. I never want them going the exact same direction. If I'm going to do such a simple design, that means I need to execute it flawlessly. Super cool. You better make him bulletproof. Jess is doing a traditional ass rose right now. Not even I'm going traditional right now, and that's what I like to do. Five hours, one by quick. Yeah, five quick. I mean, for me at least, probably not so much for you. Today, you faced off by freehanding your design directly onto the skin. And based on your work, one of you will be packing your machines. Jess. It's very stale. This choice to just do this open skin heart with just this true gray in here, really taking it away from what you'd expect to see in a traditional style tattoo of this nature. The rose has very different, very weird shapes for the exterior petals, not what you want to present on a day where you're drawing for your life. It's time to determine who is going home. Today, Justice is the one that sticks out as the true bottom. My vote's also for Jess. The judges have decided. Jess, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Jess, I don't think anybody here has maintained their composure or kept their head as straight as you have. Watching you work is just a pleasure, dude. I appreciate the opportunity. It's a really humbling experience. Please pack your machines and close shop. You'll have seven hours to freehand your design directly onto your canvas' skin. Fail to impress the judges, and you'll be packing your bags. Good luck. Awesome. Alright, let's go figure this shit out. So I'm thinking maybe skull around this bottom part and have some way to have the flag like flowing up this way. If we can somehow have his hand possibly coming out of the side and holding onto a pair of handcuffs. Okay. This guy wants so many elements and he's pretty adamant that he wants it on his back. I don't know why I took a flat surface. His back is massive too. My only issue, like composition-wise, if the flag is unfurled, where it would kind of flow down. Like he wants it like flat. This goes against the aspect of it being compositionally correct. I'm feeling super stressed. If I up, I'm going home on a black and gray tattoo, and that's what I do all the time. Challenge for the day is composition. Mm -hmm. So yours is like a flat surface, so it's hard to find like a good composition. You can't like move it to like your leg or anything like that, right? Um, I'd rather not. All right, artists, you have seven hours to freehand your tattoo, and your time starts now. All right. All right, brother, let's do it. I'm going to shave you and get your back prepped, uh, and then I'm going to play with some stuff on your back and see what happens. Today, we're testing composition, and this is a perfect way, because freehanding something onto the body allows for perfect placement. It allows for flow. It allows for the design to move with the muscle or body part. Do you wish the tattoo actually felt like this? Yeah, right. It'd be a lot easier, wouldn't it? If you're proficient at what you do, you can draw directly on the skin, use that as your guideline, and sail away. I 
I'm getting nowhere on the back. If I put the flag there, it's not really gonna show great composition if there isn't a reason for it. Where the flag would have to come it stops weird. It's not like working. If you do calf, it's just gonna be a better area to do it. You're gonna get what you want and still be able to, you know, get an awesome piece. Yeah, let's do it. Your calf? Okay. We're at Rocket Girl. Now I have to redesign this entire thing. Good drawing. I just want a final design to look at when I'm done, you know? Why are you gonna draw it on a piece of paper again? Draw it on the calf. That's your paper. Five hours left, guys. Five more hours. I am learning so much. They call me like the queen of the bottom because like I've done a lot of styles that I don't, at home I do black and gray realism. Yeah. That's what I do. Ash, shut up. Keep tatting. <laughs> I know, no worse. This is why I like. I was like, when you're talking, you ain't tatting, so I know. shut it. I'm always like, <laughs> I don't need your stories. You need to get your ass finished. <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> awesome. So I can't believe you finished that. I'm going to throw up immediately after this. Today, you had to freehand your design directly onto your canvas. Women's team, let's start with you. I hope they call me first. Ash. I was just kidding when I said I wanted to go first. This really bold, really heavy black style plays well, but compositionally, doing the handcuffs in the skull would have been the best thing for you. You overwhelm yourself with so much flag and so little stars, so much choppiness and unease that you take away from all the nice work that you do in the skull and in the handcuffs. Flags are tough. Today, you are being tested on composition. Based on your work, one of you will be packing your machines. I definitely struggled because it was a freehand challenge and I really wanted to take time to like really get my design down on the skin. Having this big dark area over the top of this bright, nice lit head of the skull, the flag just takes this thing over and you really only needed a little hint of it. Well, as soon as I started, I knew I, I kind of messed up with doing it so big. All right, guys, time to determine who's going home. Anatomy problems on Jason. I think the more you look at it, the more those things stand out. What it comes down to for me is that Ashes looks like a cover up. The top triangle, because it's so out of sort, just that section looks like you covered something. My vote's for Ash. The judges have decided Ash, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. You're resilient. You keep coming back. You never throw your girls under the bus. That quality for you as a human is an amazing quality. Don't ever lose that. Stay strong, stay loyal, and keep learning. Yeah. Ash, please pack your machines and close shop. Thank you. Christmas tattoo turned out exactly like we thought it would. It's busted. His face looks like it's melting down his neck. It's not fixable. That portrait will never look right. Today, you must create a portrait tattoo. Remember, we're testing precision. If your tattoo doesn't look like the picture, you'll be packing. You have six hours to tattoo, and your time starts now. Let's do this, man. I'm not gonna lie, dude, I was looking at like your art and it was kind of making me a little nervous because it's a portrait and I didn't really see any of those from you. So it was like, I was like, oh my God. I'm definitely, I'm putting a lot of faith in you. That woman's a saint in my eyes. She always will be. You know, you gotta have confidence in your artist because okay. that negative projection sometimes works against you. My canvas is putting an immense amount of pressure on me. Her face looks a little bit fatter. We squish it down so it looks fatter. Mm -hmm. When we put it on your leg and it curves around your leg, it's gonna look skinnier. You see how it skinny's out? I'm convinced that the curve of the canvas is going to elongate the portrait. By squishing it down a little bit, it's going to compensate for that. I need you behind me on this, man. Trust me, I, <laughs> I need to be behind you oh, on good, this. Good, good, good. <laughs> Everybody's wondering if I can pull this portrait off. It's pretty intimidating. This is the worst picture to work from. Because of the contrast and no, the, the blur, yeah, the graininess. Look at this. The photo, blurry as hell. But I got enough of the gist to actually follow the blur to make it sharp. And it's because I am a portrait artist. I have to find the clean parts of that in my head. You have to be able to pull off bad pictures sometimes. Pulling that off will be a guaranteed win. I start coloring in the hair, and I'm realizing that squishing the photo was a bad idea. How are you feeling about it? As long as she don't look like she just got out of Taco Bell, I'm golden. 
gave this guy a fat grandma. That's the one fear that my canvas had. We still talk about her like she's in the next room. That's how much she meant to the family. I'm trying to project confidence in this scenario, even though I'm super freaking out on the inside. To make her look a little thinner, I kick a little more shadow on the jawbone, and I also bring the hair in a little bit on the right side. But even after all that, it still looks chubby. He's like, I'm covering the face. I don't want anyone to see it. Jesse squeezed the image. I'm not sure where that was a good idea. I'm looking around at all the tattoos, and I'm realizing that mine's the worst. When it comes to elimination, whoever I'm in the bottom with, I'm hoping the judges will see more potential in me moving forward than them. Mr. Jesse Smith. How are you feeling about this? I feel like I dropped the ball. We're judging precision. I got to say, I don't feel like any of the details in this tattoo are precise. The hair could be a little more realistic. Hair is a tough thing to do. It's one of the hardest things in a portrait. It could have been more detailed. It looks a little too just not real enough. You look at this photo, you see strands. The way you tattooed this hair is more like a weird fur slash tribal pattern. Not to mention just the entire perimeter of the face does not look the same. You totally it up. I mean, I don't have too many legs to stand on here. My portrait obviously sucks. And if we're looking for precision and detail, this is Sebastian's strong suit. So if there's one thing he shouldn't drop the ball on, it should be this. If I dropped the ball in new school when I was in the bottom two in new school, I would have sent myself home. Would like to say Jesse's a dickhead for throwing me under the bus. He didn't execute precision. Jesse made his face fatter. That's up precision, I'm trying to make a face fat. What's that, Sebastian? Talking about executing precision. Like, he made a face fatter. You don't ever change the actual face. Literally, change it. We're seeing a new side of you today. But hear him throw me under the bus like that is not a happy moment for me. Make a case for yourself. Don't make a case off of me. But that's what you do, man. You should have nailed it. That's all I got to say. The judges have decided. Jesse, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Get the f out of here. To do a portrait, your accuracy has to be 100% on point. One little difference in any part of a face, and your portrait looks completely off. There's no way around it. Even if the tattoo is perfect, perfection, yeah. they're going to be like, why did you cut this piece out for not that? You feel me? Yeah. I'm stunned. I kind of figured. And you just, you're ready to just tackle this thing? Yeah. Jimmy's doing a tattoo of one of his judges. That's got to be pretty intimidating. There are a lot of moles back here. I know. My question is, if it's not the back, what do you suggest? Do you got things on your legs at all? No. I would probably suggest legs, I guess. My canvas wants a tattoo on her back, but it is moly back there. I need a tattoo her somewhere else. Who won the flash challenge, Jimmy? Yes. I guess he screwed you, huh? If she's going to stick to her guns, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll end up with the portrait of her mother on my leg. Wow. What do you think? I love it. Oh, my God. What do you think? I wish I looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to prove that I can do other things. It's going to be a big feat in itself today if I can make it past this point as one of the new school kids. So do you do much like realism portraits? I would say almost absolutely not at all. Somehow, I wiped his entire right eye off of my stencil. The pattern is going away, especially in the areas where I don't need it to go away. If you lose part of your stencil, 99.999% of the time, you're You do not want to try to freehand something on a face. Just do him one eye. As if it wasn't bad enough, this guy is sitting there watching me up. I need to fix this. You're not like over her shoulder watching? We decide we're gonna tattoo her on her calf. She's not a big girl, and it's a lot of detail in this small spot. Every wrinkle, every strand of hair, every eyelash is going into this tattoo. I can't believe the work that goes into this. I have to at least try to take this home for my family. I can't keep being the bottom of the barrel. You make sure you tell him if he's doing something wrong. Kyle's looks like a ball of raisins kind of like smashed together. Is that horrible for me to say? He should be trying to soften her face and just show the main shapes of her face rather than every single wrinkle. Today, you had to tattoo a subject intimidating for even the best tattoo artists. A portrait. Jason, you're up first. Was it nerve-wracking to have 
the subject of your portrait sitting in the room with you as you were? It's a little threatening because yeah. you're standing right there. Yeah. This is testing every one of my panic disorder buttons. Overall, man, you did do some neat tricks to get some detail in there. The mustache and the beard, the detail is very nice. The mouth, you captured the little smirk. There's a couple spots you lost me on accuracy. Just the shape of his hair, the way it goes onto his shoulder, it doesn't have the same shape. But accuracy in the glasses, that's the big fudge on this thing. It looks like you kept trying to sculpt it and sculpt it, and you ended up changing the shape of the glasses. I tried to put white in there, and then I noticed that it was thickening up. This was the tattoo that needed the most accuracy because there were so many different textures. If you can't nail each texture, then it shows up a lot. It just threw it off. Kyle. But you accurately captured a lot of parts about this lady. If you look at the shading on their nose, it actually has dimension. You actually put the contour in there. But then you went in here and put too much time in every wrinkle. You accentuated the parts of the photo that you kind of don't want to accentuate. I don't know if I was the first one to say it, but I definitely wasn't the only one to say Leatherface when I looked at this tattoo. It's not a flattering look. I had to show accuracy. I think your accuracy is one of the stronger points on it. You nailed it, dude. It's a lot more accurate not to pinpoint Jason than his glasses. You had a tough one, but I think you did a great job on it personally. Jimmy. Your weak point is you didn't go dark enough. And the hair and the eyes, the beard goes to the jawline. You kind of created some highlights in there that made it look lighter. One of my biggest fears was to make the tattoo so dark that it looked like a cover-up. I mean, we see Dave all the time, and his hair's jet black. His eyes are super dark and smoky. And you took some liberties with your accuracy. It kind of takes away from what it could have really been. That's what I first thought, because I was like, that's right. You should have trusted Easier. it. You ended up doing way more work than you had to. No better way to test accuracy than with portraits. We got to send one of these guys home. Let's start off with Jimmy. He has done smoother black and gray than his portrait. He just overthought it. Yeah. There's a couple things that Jimmy did on there that changed the look of it, mainly that lower jaw. He highlighted a lot of areas that are clearly dark in the photo. Next up, we have Kyle. Trying to replicate every little nook and cranny, it's a lot to put in there. She has areas where she is not as wrinkled in this photo, like the circles of her cheeks. I know it doesn't aesthetically look pleasing, but it's more accurate than the one that Jimmy did of you. Yeah. And it's more accurate than the one that Jason did. But out of Jimmy, Jason, and Kyle, Jason did the most aesthetically pleasing of the three. There was mistakes. The whole shape of the glasses is off. The ear is darker than the whole face, and it's not in the photo. Today, we tested your accuracy by asking you to tattoo a portrait that matches a photo down to the last drop of ink. Jimmy, Jason, Kyle, the three of you were slightly off. And any one of you could justifiably be sent home. Kyle, you're here because the human canvas jury voted that you had the worst tattoo of the day. I didn't really expect that. That's the people you're trying to please first, so. That sucks. This tattoo is way too little for all that texture. You don't have enough room to let the tattoo breathe, and that's what made it look so dark. There's a lot of that that's going to come out. Those creases, they weren't done with solid black at all. Jason. You didn't do a horrible tattoo, but when we line it up against everybody else's and look at the accuracy of all these things, the ear, the hair, the glasses, it's those details that are wrong. I saw my shortcomings on that tattoo, and I know that this is not the best of me. Jimmy. Jimmy, you won black and gray day. But because this challenge was named portrait, it hindered your black and gray. There was a lot of inaccuracies in your portrait. You should have stuck with your gut. The judges have decided. Jason, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. You have six hours to tattoo an X-Men color portrait, and your time starts now. Okay, let's do this. When looking at a color portrait, you're looking for it to be an exact replica of the photo. Therefore, everything has to be precise. The eyes have to line up, the shading on the nose has to be just right. You have to capture every little essence of the face. So I'm feeling really good about my tattoo. It's coming out exactly the way I want it to. Very nice, very nice. It's looking really good. The nose, lips, eyes, cheekbones look exactly like the reference. I love it. My canvas wanted to get the knives in, but I'm very concerned about time. I'm very upset that I can't get them in. If I don't finish this tattoo, I'm screwed. Because Warpath always has knives, as soon as you take his knives out, it's no longer Warpath. It could just be anybody. This is a huge mistake. I just hope it looks good. You think it's gonna look good? I think it'll look cool. Okay. 
Today, we ask you to use technical precision to create an X-Men color portrait. Lydia. What happened here with the negative space underneath this gentleman? He initially had the knives, but I didn't have enough time. So I just figured I'd put a big X down there. What makes this character recognizably X-Men are those blades. Missing those, it's very difficult for me to know who this is. The problems with just the structure of the portrait, the shape on one side of the nose, the crease you put in and the dark shadow, they don't line up. In the photo, his lips are straight. In your tattoo, they look crooked. That's a big mark to miss. Rolling. When you're doing a portrait, you got to copy the structure of the face. She does not even have the same shape. The color fades are not there. Color, as you know, is not my forte. I don't find any redeeming qualities in this tattoo at all. All right, today, technical precision, yep. color portraits of X-Men characters. Let's talk about the bottom of the day. Lydia did Warpath. This technical precision that she's lacking shows in just looking at the shape of the lips and looking at the shadow along the side of the face and the look of the hair. It will take a lot of work to fix this face up. And rolling. This tattoo didn't keep the shape of the face. He didn't put the shadows on the tattoo in the same place the shadows in the portrait. This is the antithesis of technical precision. Today, you tattooed the best test of precision that there is, a color portrait. Roland, you're here because Scott put you up for elimination. Scott, why did you put Roland up for elimination? I felt that his piece was one of the weakest. This one, that was it for him, in my opinion. I will admit this is a very difficult tattoo that's been out of my repertoire, but I'm here to fight. I'm here to stay here. Lydia, you're here because the human canvases determined that you had the worst tattoo of the day. As far as my tattoo being worse than Roland, I don't agree with that. I believe I'm a better tattoo artist than him. When the human canvas jury calls you down, that for you is a major nail in the coffin. That's your client base. It was a tough tattoo to get through, and I overthought it. Roland and Lydia, either one of you could be packing your machines. The judges have decided. Roland, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Okay, artists, you have six hours to tattoo a portrait. Only five of you remain, and four of you will move on. And your time starts now. All right. Let's do it. Get on it. You just stand straight up and just relax. With portraits, precision's essential because this is where everything has to be dead on. Every single drop of ink that you apply to that portrait is gonna be a reflection of the face in the picture, and it can't be off. If you change a feature on a face, you're out. When I do a tattoo, I'm like, do this tattoo like you would be okay with walking around with it. My canvas originally wanted his wife's portrait on his arm, and I talked him into moving it on his thigh. This is much better placement, but this tattoo has a lot of things going against me right now. The hair could totally make or break this tattoo. I need to make sure the hair is flowing, but not super crazy. And on top of everything, it is so stressful having this woman watch me tattoo her face. This is a ton of pressure right now. That's what stoked me out on it, man, is all the little crazy metals and stuff, you know what I mean? Give me a chance to get fancy. I purposely picked this photo because you can't really see the face. My strategy is to make this jacket and this helmet look so on point that it's undeniably a good tattoo, and they can only pick apart the face so much because the face isn't even there. Holy crap, that's sick. All the little detail on the metals, it's like, holy Christ. Cruzman's tattoo turned out exactly like we thought it would. It's busted. His face looks like it's melting down his neck. It's not fixable. That portrait will never look right. Cruzman, pack your bags. Today, you had to give canvases and their loved ones a way to stay together even when military service keeps them apart by tattooing a portrait. Cruzman, start with you. 
Speaking about precision specifically, there are really great examples of that in the uniform itself. I love what you did with the name tag and the little elements on the jacket, those fine details. That's why I picked this one. There was the least amount of face to do, and I am not a portrait tattooer, so I figured that that was my only hope of holding on. It looks like some of the shading in the face got away from you, especially that line in the nose. The shading you put in the nose takes the nose in the wrong direction. His chin going into his neck, you needed to up the definition of that a little bit to show which one of these crease lines is his actual face and which one is the neck. You see what you did inside the jacket with the tie and that reflection of the shirt? You were confident because it wasn't a face. I totally was. If you're not confident in a face, don't treat it like a face. Just treat it as shapes and go in with the same confidence that you go in in the jacket area because you can do it. There are examples of the precision that's necessary to hit those things. Duffy. One thing I will say about your portrait is you do have smooth, good areas of gray, but the really heavy cheeks that you gave her, those really weren't as pronounced in the photo. You changed their face completely by sagging her out. And because you didn't shade the two back teeth on the right, as dark as it is in the photo, you give her buff teeth. See, the problem with your hair is where it meets the head. It looks like she's bald and she's wearing a wig and the wig is slipping off to the back. You put a real crease between her bridge of her nose up to her eyebrow. It totally recontoured the lay of the land. You don't capture the spirit. Today we're testing precision with portrait tattoos. Cruzman definitely has a lot of problems in his tattoo. The dark shading he put in the face in the wrong spot. Looks like something bad happened to him. He's got a broken nose for sure. The ridge of the nose is a right turn and that's really taking this tattoo out. Duffy's, I don't think it looks like this woman at all. If you look at her photo, she's an attractive woman, but the tattoo, it is scary. Duffy really loses it because she gives this woman melting cheeks, incredibly pushed out teeth. She has some really nice shading in this. Her shading is nicer than Cruzman's, but unfortunately it's not right. Today you had to tattoo the ultimate test of precision, a portrait. It's time to find out who the human canvas jury determined had the worst tattoo of the day. Oh, man. Wow. Duffy, you're here because the human canvas jury determined that you had the worst tattoo of the day. That's the last thing I wanted to do, was disappoint you, especially under the circumstances. Frank and Gladys, why did the jury vote Duffy to the bottom? My wife looks a little different. My face looks bigger than what it is. My teeth are a little bit closer together. And the hairline looks receded on one side. I just look different. Every single mistake counted on this one. I've over-exaggerated some things I thought would be really good definition. I apologize. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right, kiddo. It's just not the tattoo you want to disappoint on for sure. When I look at Cruzman's first glance, it looks like the photo, but when then I pay attention to the face, it's up. One line of shading on your nose, this tattoo. Because you don't cap the ridge to create that hot spot on the bulb of the nose, without that, you completely change the dynamic of the face. If it at least just had one perimeter outline around this guy's facial shape, it would not look like he's wearing a wet paper bag for skin. A few little lines could have kept you out of the bottom. Well, we have the last master and apprentice duo standing here before us. One can move on, and one has to go home. And we have to decide that. If they're equal, flows for the master. He gave her the gift of tattooing. And when it's handed over properly, look where good tattooing ethics gets the apprentice to the end. I'll say that the reason why Cruzman's is more appealing is not the portrait part of the tattoo, it's the uniform, the framework that lent itself to look more like that photo. But when you go down to face versus face, I think Duffy's face looks more human. <laughs> the judges have decided. Duffy, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. Okay, artists, you will have six hours to tattoo matching portraits. Your time starts now. All right. Yes. Good. 
when you go get a portrait, you don't want it to almost look like the person, almost don't count. I think I should go a little bit smaller than this and a little bit bigger than that. It's very important that they stay precise to the photo as well as to each other. This is tough. You don't know if your partner's gonna go off on a tangent and do something crazy. Are you super ready? Let's do this, April. Can you check what I'm doing to make sure that we're on the same page? Yeah. I am at Eva's mercy on this one. I'm definitely not the best portrait tattooer. So this is the gap where it's like where this is. Yeah, there's one lower and one higher. Mm -hmm. so and this they're kind is... of wrap around. Yep, you got it. Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah, that looks right to me. I know that she knows what she's doing, so I'm just going to try to do the same. It's a trust game at this point. What do you got for in this section? Is that a one and then this is a? A skin tone, or is that? Most likely, I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, OK. I'm a little worried about Tom, because it has been so long since he's done a portrait. I'm going to say that's a skin tone. Yeah, that's a skin tone. All right, I'm sorry, that's a one. I just hope that he can rely on my strengths to help guide him through it, because you can't wander on a portrait. You have to do exactly what's in front of you. Today, you had to tattoo the ultimate test of precision, matching portraits, allegory arts. You very clearly missed a mark on details in the photo. Y'all had the same approach for this nose, but that is not a human nose. It has a very feline look to it. Euless, the tattoo doesn't look like this little girl. The eyes, they're just different shapes. Well, Eva, I think you did get in there with a lot more precise detail on the hair. And overall, the technique and the shading is smoother, but you still distort the shape of her face. The shading you put above her left eye, you create these indentions and protrusions that just aren't there. Nailed it. The coffin, yeah. Classic trilogy tattoo. Let's keep it 100. Your tattoos, they're different, big time. The hair looks different, the eyes look different, the noses, the mouths. Tom's eyes are doing different things. One's looking up, one's bugging out. You create this real stern lip on that right eye that gives it more of a creature type feature on the outside. Swing and a miss. Artistic skin design. Usually you look at a portrait and you're drawn to the eyes. I'm drawn to the clothing. On both of them, that sweater and that shirt, I see precision all day. But it just looks like a different artist did the top half. In both of them, the hair is completely different. Dane, you brought the left side down a little further. In April, you brought the right side up a little. They're not consistent or precise with the photo and certainly not with each other. All right, guys, today we're testing precision. Who do you guys think are on the chopping block to go home? Neither of these tattoos look like each other, nor do they look like the child. How do the eyes that occurred on Eva's face, how does that even occur? And then artistics, these things. Wow. They must have wasted four and a half hours on that little sweater and collar and about an hour and a half on the face. But I'd rather have classic in the bottom. I don't think either one of them capture a portrait style tattoo or this face. Today, you had to prove that your precision is on point. Based on your work, one shop will be packing their machines. All right, jury appears. Why did you vote Allegory Arts to the bottom? This was the cutest, most adorable subject. And that's not what the tattoos look like. Guys, there's a lot of things here that are off. The discrepancy in the eyes, the whys in the nose, just a huge head shaker. But they look closer to the same artist than Classic Trilogies does. But I put a face that was more accurate to the photo. Yeah, I think that you look at Classic Trilogies, neither one of them look like the photo. And neither one of them look like each other. If they both look exactly like yours, Derek, I would have no problem. I definitely dropped the ball. This application is just messy. Just look at the hair and you're like, what is that? But it is a woman, artistic skin design. If you're not looking at the kid, they look like little old men. Both these tattoos have a very undone feel for me. Normally when I do portraits, I build up layers, and there is no building up layers. Well, I think you just panic. It started getting red, and you're like, damn, I don't want to put no more ink. But sometimes you just got to trust your skill. If you would have tattooed the rest of the portrait at the level you tattooed the clothing, you wouldn't have been there, you know? Well, we do have to make a decision here. Too much of a mess. Classic trilogy. I'm just a canvas, and Allegory looks like a weird kid. My vote is for Allegory. I'd rather wear Derek's tattoo than any of Allegory's. But it's a competition, and it's not what I want. It's what the competition wants. So they did them exactly alike. They did them different. 
I guess I would have to say classic. The judges have decided classic trilogy tattoo. You do not have what it takes to be master shop. You guys tattoo a little different, and I think that's what got you here. Learn from this. Hell yeah. Please pack your machines and move out. We're doing full size. These details are going to be like as close as I can. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like a pinup. Well, I was yeah. thinking about maybe like doing like a little flower in front of it. Yeah. You know, so you have like a little illustration, and then like you have her, so it makes sense, like the transition. But that's like flower on my wrist. I don't give a shit about flowers at all. Maybe I could put a ribbon under it. But I don't know if I like the ribbon. This canvas is giving me such a hard time. She doesn't want to work with me in any aspect of this. Could you do like a stone? I think that's going to feel like morbid, like a tombstone. I personally don't mind if it just ends. I do. Like, that's like the most unartistic way to end it is unflattering. She has to meet me in the middle or I'm going home. The flower is literally just an afterthought. But I feel like it's tacky. And then tomorrow I'll be like, what the f did I do? Artists, do you have six hours to tattoo a traditional illustrative portrait? And your time begins now. All right, dude, let's do it. See if we can get this thing to work. Step on over here, my hand. This is Portrait Day with a Twist. We're asking these artists to do renderings of photographs. So the photograph and the portrait that they create have to look alike, but they have full license to use heavy lines, heavy color, deep black shading. I think we'll be able to pull it off. Let's do it. They can do it as they see fit, as long as they capture the look of the picture. I was afraid that I scared you away. I wasn't trying to be mean. I hope she doesn't think I was. No, I'm actually I, really I nice. I definitely went back and I was like, I don't think this is going to work. Since I got to go more illustrative, now I have to show a little bit more detail. And the face is too small to show all the details and make it look like this person. I got a little nervous. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Well, we felt the same, but we feel the same now, so that's better. That's it. It has teeth in the tattoo, and I don't know how to approach this without making it look like it has veneers. Ah, oh, shit. Grandma's got a mustache. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding? Tough crowd, mm -hmm. tough crowd. I am shook as Jason. Oh. There's aspects of this that you do capture at least the look of the subject, but I'm not a fan of the hair. The black stripe that you put in the hair for the shading makes it look like the hair's flattened, and then he's got a big poofy back. The right side of the hair doesn't really look like hair. It looks like a shape tucked to the side. The left eye to me looks like he got punched, only that eye has this darkness to it. But adding the lure and the border, it is traditional illustrative style. I don't love this tattoo from you at all, but capturing the look, OK. Pawn. As far as capturing the look of the person with a simple drawing, you don't do it. If you look at her right eye, the top of her eye is curved. And the tattoo, it's a straight line and then curved underneath. Just the little looks of what's going on, you lose it. The shape of the mouth is off, the width of the neck. As dark as you went in the collarbone, as weird as the shoulders come out, I can be like, OK, it's stylized, gritty. It's whatever if you're looking to go that route of illustration. But what I can't not see is the precision in the face. Your eyes don't line up. The nose has a crazy curve to it. The mouth is off center. That's all the places where you need to be precise. Women's team, you're next. Laura. It is a nice, well-applied tattoo, but it's hard for me to say that this really looks like this girl. The expression on the face, you're not really getting that little tight grin, and her neck looks really wild. The way you have the back of her shoulder and her neck going all the way up to the ear makes her neck enormous. That sucks. The other thing that I really dislike, these black lines you put on her forehead that aren't connected, that are just random black lines there. I know that you're trying to show the suggestive loose hairs, but it's a very strange play. Today, we're testing precision with traditional illustrative portraits. Really assessing who did the best or the worst comes down to hitting the likeness of the subject. Pawn's displacement of the facial features, that's the problem. The eyes have to be on the same plane. Creepy Jason, I don't know that that necessarily looks like the gentleman in the photo either. That mustache on the tattoo is literally a comb flipped upside down. It's super plastic potato -y face. He really doesn't hit it. Another artist that took some liberties in terms of shapes is Laura, surprisingly. I just don't think it looks like the girl, really. The face looks different, the nose looks different, the mouth looks different. Not working to her favor today. Today, you're being tested on precision. And based on your work, one of you will be packing your machines. Danny, 
Why did the women's team vote Jason to the bottom? Laura felt that she could defend herself better with Jason's. I mean, I'm sorry, Jason. Mine is the stronger out of the two, basing off of inconsistencies in the shading in the face, color packing, and then also the streaky white highlights. Yes, her application may be a little better than mine, but that's not to say that her tattoo is without its own flaws. The scratchy lines around the lips, that could have been solid. The little pieces of hair that start away from the hairline is an awkward choice. The little wispies in the hair, I mean, you can't pull that off in a traditional way by doing these little soft wispies. But you'd connect it to the hairline. There's big, thick black hairs growing out of the girl's forehead. When we look at these things that have to hit precision, you guys really got stumped. Jason, when you draw, you're at your best. And then when you have to work off something, we see where the chinks are in the armor. All the things in here that you do, which is what you do, like rope, background, allure, they have your style. They have a signature of you. What looks out of place is the figure. On your tattoo could have easily been that pinup style where you could have yesed your customer to death, but done it the way you do it. I got shooken up and I just went back in with blacks, making everything darker. The face not having the precision that we're looking for and the fact that you have some rougher shading, it's not hitting the traditional, it's not hitting the precision. I showed you guys in the past like what I've done. I know there's no report cards, but this is all bizarre to me be down here. Like I've never had any application problems or anything like that. Like I've consistently did clean tattoos. I just had one hiccup of a day and I know that's all it takes to send you home. Ultimately, one thing is for sure, these canvases wanted a rendering that looked like the photo. So that's where I'm coming from. My decision is for Pawn. Pawn. The judges have decided, Pawn. You do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have made it this far. Please pack your machines and close shop. Thank you, guys. should be knocking out of the park together. This is a solid piece with color all over it. Dude, it's just a flat tire. Sausage, why are you so pissed, It's just man? a difference in no, taste. Dude. Why are you so, like, well, what's your problem? I knew that you were gonna tear it. I love it. Great, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Nobody else does. Artists, this week you're fighting for an Ink Master shop, and one of you won't get one. Randy. You were a photorealism guy, right? That's typically what I get asked to do. From the black to the brown to the orange to the yellow, there's no soft fades. It was kind of meant to be more of a painting style. Even if you take a painterly approach at a real photo, your quality of application still has to be there. We're lacking that. Damon. Your inexperience really shows. The shading in the spider web on her forehead, very splotchy. There is a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of weak outlines. It is just not smooth. There was no care, attention, or detail put into this. I honestly didn't think it was like that bad. If you cannot see the many problems with your outline, then you have a major issue. Roland. I was very impressed with your knowledge and the layout and the way you fit this to the leg. The tattooing you did at the convention, there's not a person in this room that looked at that cat and said, hey, this is a professional grade quality tattoo. That stuff is not going to work in this competition. So let's talk about the bottom. Who doesn't deserve a shop here? You got Randy, who did not do solid black, who did a lot of crooked lines. I mean, that ship, is a mess. It's a mess, but it could be fixed. If you had to wear David's skull or Damon's Day of the Dead Girl, what would you choose? This tattoo has a lot of technical flaws. I understand what you're saying. However, it's way more legible and readable than the skull we saw from the 20-year veteran. Let's talk about Roland's tattoo. This tattoo doesn't look bad until you get close and see that it's not 100% solid. Roland, Randy, Damon, any one of you could justifiably be sent home could have put all the names in a hat and sent any of you guys home. The judges have decided. Randy. 
You have earned a shop. Congratulations. Thank you. Damon and Roland. The judges have decided. Roland. You've earned a shop. Have a seat. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I won't let you down. Damon, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. What's coming, you're not ready for. This is a tough house to come into when you're not ready to be here. Please pack your machines and go home. Randy. The top eyelid looks a little misshapen. And the bottom lid kind of looks a little sagging, almost like the flies on like a little piece of beef jerky. I used an actual photograph. A lot of the black and gray in this thing is very beat and very red, and the tattoo looks painful. You turned in one of the roughest tattoos of the day by far. Roland. This tattoo's bad, dude. He asked for a eyeball of his father. He wanted it not to be a pretty eyeball. His dad's kind of old. Is there any smooth shading? Nope. It's the judges have decided that the artist with the worst tattoos of the day are Roland, Randy, and Ashley. Obviously, Ashley is not standing here with you, and that is because Ashley has decided to quit. She's gone, be gone, stay gone. Roland. This tattoo does not stack up to the rest. Randy. You turned in one of the roughest tattoos. I know you're taking a beating so far here, and I want you to come back and do some I just don't know that you have that ability. All right, even though Ashley quit, Roland, Randy, either one of you could be justifiably eliminated. The judges have decided that both of you will get one more chance. <laughs> Bubba. As soon as you get close to this thing, there's no solid color, there's no straight outline. If you give somebody enough rope, they hang themselves. And you're hanging yourself here. David. There's nothing consistent in there at all. I don't necessarily know if I even see a geometrical shape. There's a lot of chewed up skin in there. This guy has to walk around with that for the rest of his life. That's a rough one. Man, you just hammered this guy. There's no way in hell that it was a wise decision. How do you even cover this thing? This is a responsibility thing. You can't do this. It's a tough day. Geometric tattoos, focusing on consistency. Talk a little bit about David Bell. That thing's not even gray, it's blood. Bubba. There's no straight lines. The color is not solid anywhere. I think he had a great idea. He just bit off way more than he could chew. The judges have decided. David. Have what it takes to be Ink Master. We have a lot of respect for you, man. Sometimes pain clouds the judgment. You have the most experience, and that's why it makes it unforgivable. Please pack your machines and close shop. This week, we ask you to show perfect placement with an aquatic tattoo. Roland. You kind of just put the grouper at the bottom and you left a lot of area open. I just feel like it was just unfinished. This tattoo is by no means a winner today, but you have improved. And for that, I do commend you. Baba. I thought Poseidon was my dope tattoo to get, but the carriage took over the tattoo more than Poseidon. If that would have been more prevalent, I think it would have been a little better. Just a blown attempt at a great tattoo. You're drawing against everyone. And if your drawing comes up short, it's not gonna keep you here. Randy. I mean, I can't even say the well, but it's cool. It looks like something one of my kids would draw. 
Let me tell you something about me. When I started tattooing, I was 30 years old. Okay? But this isn't about your history, Listen, bro. no, it is. It, it has, has nothing to do with history. Tattooing. This has to do with what's because on the screen. I can't go into a shop as a 30-year-old homosexual and get any sort of respect from anybody. Man, who gives a shit what you it, do it in your private for, life? Let me tell you. You could be whatever you want, and you and should I be proud be. of that. You're not going to get bashed for your sexual preference. You're only going to get bashed for the quality of your craft. Today we had aquatic tattoos. We were focusing on placement. Let's talk a little bit about who missed the mark today. Randy did the squid and the whale. This looks like a Crayola scribble. There's no redeeming quality to it. And if I don't say this is crap, then I'm an idiot. Bubba did Poseidon. These seahorses, unless they took some crazy left turn, that sled is not even in the same direction of the flow. Another artist consistently in the bottom, Roland. I just feel like it's unfinished. That's why you get the emptiness up at two thirds of the tattoo. Whether we like this tattoo or not, the lower portion of this tattoo has outline, it has shading, and it has solid color. This is his best, and he delivered it. But it wasn't done, though. Roland, Bubba, and Randy. Any one of you could justifiably be sent home. The judges have decided. Randy, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Today, we ask you to use technical precision to create an X-Men color portrait. Lydia. What happened here with the negative space underneath this gentleman? He initially had the knives, but I didn't have enough time. So I just figured I'd put a big X down there. What makes this character recognizably X-Men are those blades. Missing those, it's very difficult for me to know who this is. Roland. She does not even have the same shape. The color fades are not there. Color, as you know, is not my forte. All right, today, technical precision. Yep. Color portraits of X-Men characters. Let's talk about the bottom of the day. Lydia did Warpath. It will take a lot of work to fix this face up. And Roland. This tattoo didn't keep the shape of the face. He didn't put the shadows on the tattoo in the same place the shadows in the portrait. This is the antithesis of technical precision. Roland and Lydia. Either one of you could be packing your machines. The judges have decided. Roland, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. Today, you had to use contrast to make a neo-traditional lady or gentleman that pops. Jim and Bubba. You did the grandmother, right. you did the grandfather. So this gentleman is actually not Asian, as it turns out. Oh, he's not? No, he's not. Bubba, when you did this drawing, did you not notice the differences in the shapes of the eyes? No. How? They're offset, one's larger than the other. It's time to get back to the drawing board, literally. King Ruck and Keith. Tell me what happened. It was a bad canvas from the beginning. But you turned in outlines. Yes. And King Ruck, you've also tattooed yourself. I still wanted to show you guys that I still want to compete. Well, we appreciate that. So let's start with you, King. You have a lot of really rough outlines here. As we start hitting him with the lines, he would freak out, he would jump, he would move around. If that leg's moving, push on it, man. Hold it down. You have this huge oval line that's going around the side that really shows a lot of imperfections. All right, King, let's take a look at tattoo you did on yourself. You do show contrast. And really, it's probably the cleanest tattoo you've done since you've been here. Thank you. Let's move on to Keith. Most that I have the judge on is what area you colored solid black. This area is very rough, and it's just not there. Yeah, it's not there, because I wasn't able to really go into it and do I mean, it's, it's easier for you to say up here, like, yeah, you know, you're a little. It's not dude, easy it's, for it's, us to do anything. Yeah, dude, yeah, but you know what it is, though, actually. I'm like, halfway done the goddamn thing, so like, how can you judge something that you can't see? You're not seeing anything. It's up. Listen, man, you're crazy on edge. You're just stewing and mad, and you're not confident in you. If you can't be confident in you, then how can we? All right, 
So, the challenge was neo-traditional, gentlemen and ladies, focusing on contrast. Obviously, we have King Ruck. He's struggling. Clearly turned in an unfinished, sketchy tattoo. He's falling apart. I gotta say, I really like that he tattooed himself. What about Keith, man? Keith is not doing well. This is not a flattering design. This is not a way to win over your client. Next up, Bubba. He had the good picture, man. If one of them should have came out better, it was this one. Just being able to draw the layout of a face and make it the right proportion. I don't know about you, but I don't want to see any more of this We need to take these guys out in multiples. We got to nip this in the bud today. Keith, King, and Bubba. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. Keith, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. Don't relax, by the way. Because Keith's not the only one going home today. The judges have decided. Bubba. You do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. The obvious problems in this tattoo are huge. Your drawing's everything. Please pack your machines and close shop. Today, you had to show adaptability by transforming tattoos that your canvases regret into tattoos they can wear proudly. Based on your work, two artists will be closing shop. Jim, let's start with you. Come on, dude, if this came into your shop, what the f would you have done? Not roses. You know better. For a cover-up, it's a fail. King Ruck. There's a bunch of different ways you could approach that. A nice black and blue rose could have been the cover-up. The horseshoes could have been behind it and banners under it. I've had some bomb canvases. There's 60 plus years of tattooing sitting at this table. You cannot tell me about a canvas. Gentle J. I'm most confused over the hat. It just screams cover up. There's... Melissa. How you feeling, Melissa? Terrible. I tried really hard, but she was very difficult to work with. If it's an engine, it's all got to fit together. And if parts don't fit together well, then parts don't work well. She specifically wanted new school. She specifically wanted the bubbliness. You do not let the client drive. The second you give up that seat, you give up your shot at winning 100 grand. All right, so adaptability. We yes. did a cover-up today. Two people are going home. There was talk Me, about putting King Ruck in the bottom. You have an upside-down rose. It's tucked into a black abyss. That screams cover-up. Terrible. We had Jim. You can see Marco right through this tattoo. Why is there so much yellow? Over black lettering. Melissa. A lot of things are out of whack. The details of the outlines are so wonky and out of shape. Gentle J. A mess. There's no highlight anywhere. The smoke is terrible. The eyes are terrible. Forget about the way you shaded the hat. Jim, King Ruck, J, and Melissa. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. King Ruck. Do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. The judges have also decided. Jim, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. This tattoo, it's see through. And for a cover up, that's a no go. Both of you, please pack your machines and close shop. There was a lot of tattoos that were done today that were not good. Artists, today, you had to show negative space with a black and gray demon. Lydia, you're up first. Because the teeth are the same color as the fur, as everything, the mouth gets really lost. I would have liked to see the teeth and the drool have a little more zing so we don't have to question what the lines are. Wondering what something is in your tattoo is never a good quality. Melissa. He didn't want ears, he didn't want horns, he just wanted the mouth to be the main focus of it. It doesn't bother me that it looks like a turtle, but the big black circles at the top, you don't really need because the edge of the top of his head kind of gets a little bit lost in that black there. Halo. My first instinct when I saw this was very hard to read. This wing that comes down, I thought that was some kind of a road going up to a mountain. 
And I still can't figure out if this is a breast plate or if there's a hand holding something in front of her. It's kind of made to look like fingers that kind of cup it. It definitely is the oddest, weirdest one of the bunch because there is a lot of detailed elements in a very strange composition. He had so many elements of cool things and I was like, oh, I want to put these wings in and I definitely want to get those shoulder pads and then I want to get this breast plate because it's cool. And You just took on a lot of drawing. If you don't swing for the fences, you don't hit them, right? But this was definitely a big swing in a short amount of time. Today's challenge, black and gray demons, use of negative space. Let's talk about the bottom. We had Lydia, who I was surprised. I thought this was going to be her comfort zone. It's pretty flat with one tone. There's not enough black in the outline of the hair to give this thing definition or depth. Melissa. It's just the turtle demon to me, man. The background outright looks like a cover-up. We got Halo. This is my least favorite thing he's done. He overthought it. Lydia, Melissa, Halo. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. Lydia, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Today, you had the ultimate test of flexibility, collaborating with another artist to create one tattoo. Gentle J and Melissa. We talked to the client, and she had a list of things that she was open to. She really liked the idea of the elephant. She wanted a geometric pattern. And then we suggested the headdress. Like she wanted flowers. the lotus just kind of build the tattoo around what we felt we were going to be best at. I like the red designs on top. Those are really beautiful, and it's a really nice look for a woman's leg. The details in the headdress are great, and that stuff's really exciting and cool to look at. But since it's our job to pick it apart, I see a lot of flaws. Just the inconsistencies of the body. I would have liked to see the elephant come out of the lotus instead of behind it, because it just puts a weird cookie cutter vibe to it, not a flowy vibe. The bottom of this tattoo looks terrible. There's no part of that where I could agree with you. There's no such thing as filigree coming out of a lotus flower. There's no such thing as a horse with tentacles on its head either. But... Yeah, but we knew it was tentacles. To have an elephant's leg step out of filigree, I mean, look at it, it's crazy. For two people to be up all night drawing, I expect more. We weren't up all night. Well, you should have been. That's the problem. Sausage and Maddie. Explain this design a little bit. This is actually just like a big giant mix of the coolest stuff out of Japanese styles that I like to put into things. I wanted to come up with something that was really cool. Technically sound, it's there. Saturated everything, it's there. Skin's breathing through the I mean, to me, it just breeds awesome. Technically, this tattoo is smooth throughout. I'm just not thrilled about this design. It kind of looks like someone hit a dragon with a baseball bat and just smushed the face in. Having said that, I love it technically, and I think that the line work and the color work, everything is really solid and tight. It is tattooed well, but there's four people up here that just don't aesthetically like it. You guys should be knocking out of the park together. This is a solid piece with color all over it. Dude, it's just a flat tire. Sausage, why are you so pissed, It's just man? a difference in no, taste. Dude. Why are you so, like, well, what's your problem? I knew that you were going to tear it. I love it. Great. But I mean, it doesn't matter. Nobody else does. You have the ability to do whatever you want on somebody. Don't do passion pieces. Do showstoppers. Do something that's a fight. If not, you yourself. Do you understand you can go home for this? No way. OK. I don't see it. No way. I don't, I don't Buddy, see it, careful dude. what you wish for. All right, today we did collaboration tattoos. We're testing flexibility. Let's move along to Melissa and Jay. In the line work and the shading, it just feels a little more amateurish. And it's so cut and paste. Flower, elephant, red background. Let's talk about Maddie and Sausage. They just did an ugly drawing. But it's like, how much do you fault them for none of us liking the aesthetic of it? You know, because obviously, technically, it looks great. Sausage, Maddie, Melissa, and Jay. Any one of you could justifiably be eliminated. The judges have decided. Melissa and Jay, you have the worst tattoo of the day. Only one of you will be packing your machines. The two of you must face off, tattooing the same design created by our guest judge, Luke Westman. You guys are going to have the drawing already done. So all you got to do is execute it. You've each been randomly assigned a human canvas, and you will have four hours to tattoo 
head to head. One of you will lose your shot at $100,000 and the title of Ink Master. Melissa and Jay, you faced off tattooing and design by Luke Westman to show your flexibility. One of you will be staying, and one of you will be packing your machines. First up, Melissa. Overall, I like the tattoo. I like the color choices you went with. I like the way you did the leaves, but I don't like how you left the white spaces in the rows. Normally, you can kind of leave those open, but since it was bigger, it kind of stands out a little bit more. The main thing that jumps out at me right when I start to look at it is your line work. The line work in these tattoos have to be really precise and dead on. Jay. I don't love the color palette. It doesn't have a dynamic feel that you'd like to see from this type of design. It shows a little bit of lack of flexibility. Everything kind of muddies out a little bit. The head doesn't stand too far apart from the rose because it's like a deeper, darker feel. Where you took that greatness and faded out is by doing these leaves just so dark. The leaves actually was the canvas's favorite part of the tattoo. He wishes I would have colored the whole thing solid like that. You went a little bit overboard between your black shading and the no breaks in the leaves. This looks like you're hiding something. If you look at that rose and you reimagine what the rest of your tattoo could have looked like had you have stayed on that course, you'd be looking at a very different tattoo. I'm happy with the tattoo I did. My line work was clean. My shading was all solid where it needed to be. I know you guys say the saturation in the leaves is a little bit much and they're too dark, but the canvas, that was his favorite part, is a tattoo artist. The person wearing it is who I'm listening to. And he's happy with the tattoo, so I'm happy with that. If there was a checklist, you'd hit some, she'd hit some. If Melissa's shading was a little solider, if her rose looked a little more like his, if he had a little bit less of the muddied brown, you know, his leaves are completely saturated, hers weren't, which makes it hard. There's no clear-cut winner for me. The judges have reached a decision. Jay. You do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. He's got. Today, you had to show your mastery of proportion by tattooing a Japanese snake on your canvas's ribs. Melissa, let's start with you. There's a few rules that would apply here. Like, if you look at the lower jaw, it runs alongside the underbelly. That's getting lost right there. If you'd moved it up, there would have been a little bit of a separation. Also, your leaf goes right to the back. You should never have lines touching like that. Just little things like that, I think, would help your work look a lot better. You don't have this way of making your drawings flow nicely. It's not that you're a bad artist. You just do things very stiff. You got to find your flow. Halo. What made you decide to just do the bottom just flat across? I have no background in Japanese. Traditional, I just didn't know how to end it. This does look like a tombstone. It also looks like it would fit better on an arm. Now, I understand that this is not your area of expertise. Unfortunately, it shows. You should have taken another two hours just on the drawing and done less tattooing because the snake body makes zero sense. The belly of the snake is going in the opposite direction that it should go. The belly's going upwards, not downwards. It's just way off, way off. Scott. I did get a little new school with it, but when I'm freehand drawing, I can't help it. My style is going to come out in my drawing. One of the things about Japanese tattooing is it's not necessarily always about you. It's part of a larger history, a larger culture. So walking in and being like, I'm doing it my way, it's insulting, it's utterly incorrect. She was a tough canvas, man. Her being a tough canvas aside, your drawing's your drawing. If she's a tough canvas, it's going to show even more in your application, which it doesn't. It's just odd. It's an odd drawing, man. I'm not making excuses, you know, I'm gonna stand behind this piece. It's definitely my least favorite today. And it's applied meticulously, which makes it tough, man. It's a crazy thing, this competition. All right, traditional Japanese snakes on the ribs. Let's talk about Halo's piece. From a distance, it is a big, huge spot. When people think Japanese tattooing, they think this style that was made up hundreds of years ago that really works well with the body. And what he did, didn't. If you look at Scott's tattoo, I don't care what day the challenge is, it's just an unappealing tattoo. This thing is a complete nightmare. So it's obviously between Scott for the first time and Melissa, who has the worst tattoo of the day. It's a big red S. When I look at that tattoo across the room, all I see is a red S. Yeah. Halo, Scott. Melissa, one of you is about to lose your place in the top four. The judges have decided.
Melissa, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. It comes down to your body of work. Justifiably, you may not have had the worst tattoo of the day, and I don't think you did. We're at the point now where you don't have a W in your column, and everybody else in the room does. And that's the only thing saving somebody who's down here with you from not packing. Overall, you have respect to the judges. Thank you. Please pack your machines and close shop. Artists, this was your last chance to prove that you deserve to compete in the live finale for $100,000, a feature in Inked Magazine, and the title of Ink Master. Maddie. Let me commend you on having good taste to pick the proper shaped flower to put on her chest. The way that the flower's closing on the outside and blowing open on the inside, you're drawing with a movement, and that's a great thing. All right, let's move along to your final elimination tattoo. Well, look at this tattoo from a distance. It has a cover-up feel just because that blue is so dark. The tattoo that's not the cover-up, I love the layout. I love how much open skin you left in it. That's what makes me harp on the blue roses being so dense even more. The same size roses, it's a bit much because everything the same size makes a mosaic look. If you stagger the sizes with bigger leaves and then maybe little buds, you can get more bang for your buck and more dynamics. Looking at this, the eye is just totally drawn to the blue spot. Halo. You're a cancer survivor yourself. Yeah. Did this one hit home for you more so than... Dude, I've never stayed up till 3.30 in the morning drawing four flowers. <laughs> it was intense. Yeah. Well, Halo, man, I really love the way this tattoo fits. It flows with the curve of the body. Well, speaking of flowers, let's talk about your final elimination tattoo. This canvas was completely open, brand new tattoo, yet you just did this. Uh, dude, I killed myself on this one. The tattoo overall is a beautiful tattoo. The water droplets on the petals, super glossy and HD, but then you have areas in the flowers that are very flat. Those pistols, there's no outline on one side of one. The outlines don't connect, they're just kind of here and there. You didn't put in the same level of work throughout. You didn't make it as interesting as you made it before. Final elimination tattoos, four great artists remaining, only three headed to the live finale. Next up, we have Maddie. Beautiful flowers there. It has his style, it's very well tattooed. Let's move into his elimination tattoo, the cover up of King Ruck's Sugar Skull. He's done two separate tattoos that are just on top of each other. They don't flow together well, and those four roses look like one big blue blob. It's definitely a design flaw. Next up is Halo. He really put a lot into this tattoo. The details in the smaller flowers, the color palette, the vibrancy. But in the next tattoo, he emulated this on a lower standard. I feel like this one is just a redo, but not as nice. Today, you had to prove that you have what it takes to compete in the live finale. Maddie. Halo, the fight for the last spot at the live finale is between the two of you. Halo, you've definitely wowed everybody with all of your different art skills. I feel like throughout everything I've shown that I am versatile and I do put my all into every single tattoo that I do. Being Ink Master would just be another notch in that belt. The judges have decided. spot in the live finale. What the f oh. Congratulations. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Halo, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Halo, it was a blast watching you work, man. It's been a real pleasure for us to see the real tattooers stand up. I've said you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master about 50 times, and this is the most heart-wrenching time I've ever had to say it. Thanks, guys. This was a awesome, Awesome run. Please pack your machines and close shop. The only thing that's consistent in this piece is that it's consistently bad.
can see it. Check it out. All right. Got the drawing right here, so you can see it. The face. I'm just really worried about the face, man. Like that nose. I think it's just a pencil line drawing that's kind of messing want, you up. I just want her face to be feminine, you know? My canvas is being a straight up ass. This challenge is going to be a nightmare all the way around. I don't want to have like a, a dude in a grass here. skirt. You just got to let me shade it and do my job. Ah, uh, check that bad boy out. She's definitely dancing in the wind. I don't know how they're not gonna send Tim Lee's home for doing this tattoo. When you have eyes and mouth and lips and nose that are just smashed in, then how are you gonna fix that? This guy is permanently up for the rest of his life. Tim. There's a lot of problems with this tattoo. The one hand that's up on the fretboard, that is crazy. Yeah, it kinda looks like a paw. The flowers around the ankles, that's just a tiny little tight detail. If you can do that, you should be able to do a mouth. You should be able to do a nose. You should be able to do an eye. The biggest complaints about this tattoo, it's the artistry. It's not the technical ability. How you doing over here? I'm doing well. Do you do a lot of Japanese stuff? Never. You know? Yeah. You have a color reference already? Mm -mm. No. When I was growing up, I was definitely an introvert because my family moved around a lot, so I spent a lot of my time working on my art. And that's where I think my creativity was born out of. We got a spot open for you, for sure. Girls have to kick out some guys. Yeah. We're gonna take over. Yes. Let's move on to Jennifer. That is a dick with scales. <laughs> One-eyed Willie right there. And it's got wings, even the mouth. Where's the lips? I've actually never done Japanese. I mean, technically, you have a little bit of wobbly lines with some color that's not filled perfectly in. You have problems on both sides of the fence with this tattoo. Jarga, it's a Hindu goddess. I want her on a lion, and I want her sitting like that. The only thing that I'm questioning is time, because to do that lion and to do her with all her details, would you be open to the option if we did mainly her? We can add the lion after. But I want her sitting on the lion. I'm not feeling good whatsoever. I'm freaking out. It's a lot of work. I can't even shrink it down, because if I shrink it down, it's going to just make it harder for me. My canvas's goddess needs to be on top of a lion, and she has eight hands. I stayed up making sure that each finger was the same size, that it came from the hand, that it was five fingers in each hand. <laughs> I'm shocked at this one. I don't understand why she decided to go this route and try to do this whole thing. Hold on. Doing this a second time is really taking a toll on me. Thank you for doing so great. I just wish she would have picked something a lot more simple. <laughs> I was just having a really tough time being here and dealing with a lot of stressful stuff. Tattoo baby's lion. It's horrible. It's a terrible design idea. She's losing confidence, and you can see it in her tattoos. Tattoo baby. No doubt you had a tattoo with a load of detail and the amount of time you had to cram it in there, but you gotta be kidding me with this lion. All I can think is what the I tried to do a 12-hour tattoo in six hours. Even before you had the time crunch of tattooing it, the drawing, the detail of a lion is not there. I could draw that lion totally different, but I went with a lot more simple lion. Yeah, uh, it kills this tattoo, especially in this being the detail challenge. Whoa. I mm. know. Uh, <laughs> I'm tattooing a piece of Victorian lace to mimic a dress that her grandmother wore in a wedding photo. I know I can nail this. You're doing awesome. Wow, look at that. Matt's been a strong competitor so far, but today something is amiss because his design just looks like a big black mess. If he can't get his game together, he might not make it much further in this competition. Matt. Overall, the tattoo is dark. From 20 feet away, it looks like a black handkerchief around her neck. I do know it will lighten up through time. But your outlines aren't gonna straighten out over time. The outlines that are in the swirl patterns, there's a lot of hiccups in those lines. You definitely have considerable blowouts happening near the collarbone of the neck. That's where your lack of finesse is. Why would you do that straight line across the top? At least give her some little scallops off the top and break it up. It doesn't look soft. It just looks like you slit her throat.
My canvas is doing great. He's laying still as a board. I'm working on the fingers right now. He's doing detail. This is the stuff I usually shoot myself in the foot on because I usually go too big. I've been worried about why on the judges with huge tattoos. Hasn't been working out for me. This time, I'm going to do an average size tattoo and make sure I get it done in time. In order to stay in the competition, I need to produce a solid tattoo. There's been a few tattoos you've done in this competition where we said it looked like a cover-up. Well, this time, you actually did a cover-up of your own detail. The detail in the jacket, the boots, the hair, the cigarette. Now the tattoo's done, can't see any of it. Man, it was a 10-hour day for us. My hand was killing me. I was beat the f up. I broke my thumb right before I came in. I completely underestimated how much it was going to affect me. If you don't feel like being here, throw in the towel. You owe your clients. You owe the person that you're going to put something on forever the respect that you demand for yourself. But if you can't run a clean outline, then please don't. My canvas wants to do this infinite spiral. There's nothing easy about any part of this. It's probably one of the hardest tattoos I've done in a long, long time. This elimination challenge, it couldn't have come at a worse time. My back hurts so bad. If you get lightheaded or anything, let me know, okay? I'm good, man. I can take it. I'm back and take it. I shouldn't be tattooing today, but I'm not going to deliver nothing. David's in trouble. He wanted to give the judges something to look at, but rushing through the tattoo is not the way you go about it. The only thing that's consistent in this piece is that it's consistently bad. David. There's nothing consistent in there at all. I don't necessarily know if I even see a geometrical shape. There's a lot of chewed up skin in there. This guy has to walk around with that for the rest of his life. That's a rough one. Do you think it would have been a wiser choice to go really, really slow? Absolutely. And just show us a few clean lines? By all means, it wasn't in the right frame of mind. If I could have gone back and done it differently, I would have done it 100% differently. I mean, you just hammered this guy. This thing looks like you came at him with a chainsaw. There's no way in hell that it was a wise decision. How do you even cover this thing? This is a responsibility thing. You can't do this. I would like to get a portrait done of my mom. I don't want to do all the wrinkles in there. That doesn't always play out well as a tattoo. Kyle? Oh, God. Jimmy just me. I get the oldest, the absolute hardest one to do. I am screwed. We decide we're going to tattoo her on her calf. She's not a big girl, and it's a lot of detail in this small spot. Every wrinkle, every strand of hair, every eyelash is going into this tattoo. I can't believe the work that goes into this. I have to at least try to take this home for my family. I can't keep being the bottom of the barrel. You make sure you tell him if he's doing something wrong. Kyle's looks like a ball of raisins kind of like smashed together. Is that horrible for me to say? He should be trying to soften her face and just show the main shapes of her face rather than every single wrinkle. Kyle. Oh, you accurately captured a lot of parts about this lady. If you look at the shading on her nose, it actually has dimension. You actually put the contour in there. But then you went in here and put too much time in every wrinkle. You accentuated the parts of the photo that you kind of don't want to accentuate. I don't know if I was the first one to say it, but I definitely wasn't the only one to say Leatherface when I looked at this tattoo. It's not a flattering look. Nice. It is, man. As soon as we get done with these buildings, I'm going to move to her. My canvas wants a surrealistic setting of Philadelphia being blown apart by a nuclear bomb along with a girl's face. I'll be using my girlfriend, his reference. She's hot. It'll work. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, having a good day. This mother might be going home. Last week, knocked out St. Mark. It would be gigantic if we could take out another veteran. I'm expecting something good here. 100%, the most surreal face of the day. I don't know if that's a good thing. So I understand that you used your girlfriend's image as reference. The photo that you use, she's at an angle that's tilted like this. Right. I don't feel that you interpreted that angle well, and you created a face that has more of a traditional alien shape. I think when people look at it, they'll get the idea. I don't know if they will. You didn't get that depth. You didn't get that perspective. I saw the photo. Looks like a beautiful girl on the photo. Looks like a freak of nature on the tattoo. In just a few moments, hundreds of canvases will flood this hall, and they will all want tattoos. You have six hours to tattoo as many canvases as possible with the design of their choice. 
you'll be judged not only on how many tattoos you do, but also on the quality of your tattoos. In the islands, tattoo is a very personal thing. You know, it's an exchange of energy. I don't tattoo people I don't like. This title's already mine. It's almost as if I'm reliving something I already know has happened. Roland. Well, Roland, I think I speak for every single person in this room when I look at that cat and I say, what the f Art's subjective, you know? It's something that everyone's gonna look at and see something differently. This is a tattooing skill competition. That cat is just nothing other than an atrocity. 